media gear you can accomplish anything you can play any and every position coaching to kicking to receiving to running and juking and, oh my goodness let's see how to get in slow motion get off me ah and you're gonna have a lot of haters coming at you but what you gotta do is you gotta shake them off shake them off and get to your goal and accomplish it and when that's done it's a beautiful thing i'm talking about going hard extra for that extra point and when it's done beautifully you talking about touchdown oh and the crowd goes wild and they're celebrating with you and everything man let's see that again nice black power media baby that's how we do it now go to blackpowermedia.org and get you some of that gear power yourself today yeah Yo, yo, yo. What's up, world? Welcome to another edition of Earn Your Liberation right here on Black Power Media. Geechee, y'all, Jared Ball on deck. Diallo, diva it out, you know. The diva, the diva on the way, ask her where the show link at. Okay. How, <laughs> first of all, I sent the show link. Second of all, I thought neither of you would need it because everybody can log in. We don't, we don't need it. We got the keys to the city. Yeah, you got the keys to the city. So I'm, I, you know it's what I mean. It's a parade I, inside my city. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm gonna teach y'all a, a Gullah accent today. Say fifteen. This episode, episode fifteen. Fifteen. There we go. Episode fifteen. Episode everybody say fifteen. Say fifteen in the chat, everybody. Fifteen. <laughs> Yeah, this is my lava lamp. I'm trying to bring some relaxed vibes. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to chill. It's been a rough week. And I'm not and I'm not trying to have my time at BPM be this dramatic. So uh I'm trying to I'm trying to turn down the static. And and yeah, fuff team. Uh, I'm trying team. to chill, man. Um you know, I was talking to Dr. Hate this week, man, and this is something we're gonna have to work with Diallo. Like, I think. the 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 comedy the irony there you go what up diallo come on oh i got oh. er. a thing on the thing uh. oh, sorry er. <laughs> the thing on the thing oh. okay here we go I how mean, you feeling this sorry morning? i'm good i think i had a dead link like i clicked on the other link and took me to nobody was there we know you wanted the we know you wanted the red carpet delayed introduction. It's all good. Actually, I'm an hour ahead of y'all, so I know that's Ooh. true. I'm um. here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no matter what, I'm here first. I hear you. Right. I, hear you. Uh, I don't know how the time zones work. Y'all ain't never been nowhere. Y'all ain't never. Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, man, I was talking to Dr. Hate and I was saying, you know, first of all, let me do this real quick, because because I, I had if you if you all don't mind, let me let me before we move on this morning. Um, two things. First, I spoke. I got a a, a a rare and serendipitously wonderful call from Russell Maroon Schultz, the third wow. uh, to uh, uh, alert me and us to some forthcoming work that he had been working on with, with his legendary and now late father, Russell Maroon Schultz. Uh, and uh, that's, that's uh, going to take us in some new directions. It sounds like with, with some of their, their spiritual thinking and, and 
artistic maybe i'm not entirely clear but i was like i'm all i was like you it, it's the the schultz crew has permanent welcome status around here so they they you know i i look forward to that and then i also heard from uh kevin rasheed johnson had a chance actually to talk with him uh yesterday and uh somebody i've been working with for a long time now uh who is currently a political prisoner, but someone who acknowledges that he did not enter the prison system as a political prisoner. He is he acknowledges himself as someone who's from, I guess, our general ge generation, who uh, was, as he said, a harm to the community until imprisoned uh, and politicized and has become an artist and uh, uh, an, an author and a radical organizer which within the prison new african prison movement and uh um he's been suffering as a result so i just want to raise up uh, a recent article that he's been able to publish uh about his condition um which is already linked in the show description uh, from my denied and delayed cancer care to the worst possible treatment um, and the short of it is, is that he's been diagnosed with prostate cancer and uh, is not being given treatment. And it's been more than a year and he has been not allowed any treatment. Um, so he goes into detail about the his 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 condition and uh, why he chose what he chose in terms of the, the method of health care he wanted. And then. Um, uh we're being asked to uh, stay tuned, obviously, but uh, but also to contact the prison system and encourage that they move forward with uh, the treatment. And over here, you'll see um, where you can write him. And um, maybe I can find another link specifically to to the prison authorities, but it's it's it's. Uh, um, uh, uh, not far from, well, relatively speaking, in Virginia, Sussex uh, is the, uh, I believe, the prison. And um, yeah, so I'm also noticing here, this is an interview that I did about him like almost 10 years ago at the Real News Network at this point. And I'm like, they haven't done any more discussion of him since then. Um, that would be unfortunate. But anyway, so so uh, I just wanted to raise that up and just remind folks that that and and that you know so no you won't find him on as I checked this morning the Jericho list of political prisoners and he acknowledges that he he recognized I wasn't in the struggle you know but I do think we need to be supportive not of only of of all people who get locked up but particularly those who become politicized and radicalized while in prison and look to make that change and are punished for it. And he's gone through a lot of abuse over the years um, uh, in struggling with, with prison authorities and, and trying to, you know, um, so anyway, please consider checking that link out in, in the show description and writing uh, um, or contacting uh, Sussex uh, prison in Virginia and uh, I'll add more information to that and to the show description as we go um, but yeah anyway all right uh, unless either you got anything you want to add to any of that or respond to any of that I'm, I'm I think we got a number of things to get to this morning including I don't know I don't do, know if we decided how we were, were doing it in what order but we got the Diallo tales uh, to get to I mean not Diallo <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, well, some, well, maybe, but no, <laughs> glory is really what I was thinking. Uh -huh. Um, so what you want to do? Y'all, y'all pick the order. It's all good. We, it's a loaded, loaded schedule. Yeah. I just want to say, you know, medical neglect is real. It's super yeah. real in prison. I worked in a prison infirmary for almost four years and, um, medical neglect is, is, um, rampant throughout the system. And there used to be a saying back in the 90s, people in the uh, when I was in the um, healthcare justice movement and, and in the medical workers union is that prison was the only place in America where you can get state funded health care, like full state funded health care. And um, after that came out and that started trending, that's I saw the the 
the already poor quality health care that was available to prisoners declined. So the answer was not to give universal health care to all citizens. The answer to that was to reduce, greatly reduce and defund the health care that was constitutionally guaranteed to people in custody of the state. So, you know, that's that's a big reason why I left uh, uh, and stopped working in the prison infirmary because it was it was, you know, international uh, crimes against humanity level treatment of, of inmates in the jails. And that was in private and, and state operated facilities. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised at all. Um, anyway, so, well, we can hear more about that. I, and maybe, I guess this would be next week. If we're, if we're going, if we're going to keep up with this, we can hear more about that when we do get to Diallo's stories and tales, we can hear more about, uh, uh, your work experience, uh, um, there and elsewhere. I don't know if we had agreed to do that, but I think I thought maybe we did. I think that'd be yeah. So so. Well, my thing would be I would I think we should my my two cents would be let's start with with Geechee's story because uh, to make sure we give it as much, we don't want to be rushed on that. I'd rather be rushed on some of the other nonsense and silliness. And we got plenty. Like the world has been. And I don't know if you all noticed, I loved the fact, or, or, again, it was starting to happen on Twitter, where now people are starting to tag all of us on stories that they think we should be dealing with. And, and, and one in particular that we will be, we got hit a number of times, I think collectively even, and I know I did independently, which I thought was pretty cool. I was like, yeah, they like, we started to get, you know, the earn your liberation, you know, folks starting to, now that we have Fuff Teen, they start to, you know, realize what's happening here. They like y'all need real in the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we getting law threats of lawsuits, man. <laughs> I want to yeah, say we gonna get I, to that. I gotta change my whole shit up. Yeah, we're we gonna man. get to that. And oh no, I, I have I honestly <laughs> don't even I, I think we should start with Geechee because I I think I still need some time to figure out how I need to <laughs> to just distill all of that, that I have dealt with this week. Um, cause I, you talk about deep dives. One of the reasons I'm less, less prepared for some of the other things is cause I did, I, I did the deep dive. I now caught up with what Diallo warned us about last week and, and, and mess. I, I think I need a vacation, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, need, I mean, anyway, so my vacation I mean, is, yeah. I'm going to suggest that my vacation is we're going to take a, we're going to take a, a trip this morning through, through Geechee's life timeline. So, mm -hmm. so, so Geechee, yes, let's sir. start with the basics, man. When and where did it all begin? Let's hear okay. about the parents and the, 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 yeah. What's up, man? Where's, where does the Geechee story start? So, I mean, I, I guess it was starting in uh, North Charleston, South Carolina, where I was born. Um, and I was raised in uh, Monk's Corner uh, in, in Alvin area. And people know Monk's Corner now, unfortunately, because of Charlemagne. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, <laughs> that's that's where I was uh, raised. I grew up in. So the, that's um, how you two got linked up. Yeah, we yeah we've been in the okay. same city. Uh, him, his brothers, his dad. His dad is kind of like a. His dad is one of the one of the spots young people go to in our city to like party and stuff like that. So, you know what one of I guess I can't get people in trouble, but one one person <laughs> used to sell alcohol in another community to the kids, and then <laughs> then his was like the club spot, so it was just yeah, his dad his dad was the club spot. But anyway, um, so I, I guess I can fill in. You can ask questions as goes. So I, mm -hmm. I I was a sports kid, so I played sports, all sports. But, but just quickly though, when you who's in the household? Is it you? Is it is it? Are you one of many? Are you an only child? Is it is it mom and pops? Is it what's so going my, on? My my mother had me and my sister. My pops, he wasn't he wasn't there. He was like up the road. But um, they shared just us two. Then my pops had three other boys and two other girls. They all younger than me. One of them passed away. So now I have two younger brothers and two younger sisters, but one older sister. Um. So yeah, it was uh, it was us, and then obviously my my step pops was in the house too. Um, 
who uh who just transitioned last year. I'm um, sorry to hear that. But yeah, like but football was the thing. Um that's actually what got me uh, a full scholarship to play football uh, football in college. Um I also worked at uh, Channel 4 in uh, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So I was working at a news station while I was in high school. So I already knew I was going to do like journalism, co uh, communications and stuff like that. Um, that was that was the thing. In fact, the first college I went to, ironically, my football coach was uh, Lou Saban, who's the Huff Buffalo Bills Hall of Fame coach. So he coached OJ Simpson. So I share a coach with OJ Simpson. And uh... <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, you could be said. you could be, you could be A jealous. Flex. I don't know if that's you could be you you could be jealous, but anyway, now nah, so about um, forty years too late for people to be impressed with it. <laughs> it don't matter. But so the dude, the he, so he, uh, they actually he was around. He he was around like eighty years old. So he like recruit a bunch of athletes from different parts and then end up retiring. So I end up going to this school who didn't even have communications, and I was willing to change my major because you know I thought this was like. A dope ass idea, but it was the worst, one of the worst decisions. So I ended up like leaving after he left. And um that's when I uh got into radio in Greensboro, North Carolina. So I worked for um one or two jams there, uh with knowns of like Terrence J. Um uh a bunch of a bunch of different people came from there, a guy named B Dot, um Kyle Centelia, who works in um Philadelphia right now, um, and uh, probably some other uh, local people you don't know. But then I, and so I worked in radio for a while after I left college, but then I wanted to go back to college. So uh, I literally got a, a scholarship offer over the phone. So I was working in Greensboro, North Carolina, where HBCU Central. So you got North Carolina a t Winston-Salem State, Bennett, Central. Like, it's just, you know, it was a time. It was a time. And I was a radio personality, so it was, it was a time. But I, I still wanted to go back to school. So I was about to go to JUCO, a junior college, and then come back to AT. But before I did that, a coach called me, like, yo, I saw your film and I need you to come up here. We'll pay for everything. And my homeboy was already there. And I was like, all right, like, where's it at? So my homeboy kept telling me, it's close to Tennessee, it's close to Tennessee. So I'm like, okay, Pikeville, Tennessee. I'm looking for Pikeville, Tennessee. And it's, it's not coming up. I was like, bro, I don't, I don't see this. Like, what? What are you talking about? He said, no, it's in Kentucky. I said, Kentucky? I said, nah, bro. I don't know. I can't come to Kentucky. So I was like, I was against it for a while, but then I realized that, like, I instead of going to a Juco. Why is Kentucky Central, worse than Tennessee? Well, I mean, at the time, I just, <laughs> you know, in Tennessee, so I'm from the South, so Memphis, Tennessee, we call it, obviously, Memphis, Tennessee. Like, you know that Memphis is, is black people. Kentucky, yeah. there's, there's no... I mean, and I didn't even think of horses in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. Ironically, there's a law, a legal. Uh, it's still legal, illegal to have ice cream in your pocket, because that's how people used to steal horses. They'll put your ice cream in your pocket, and they'll, the horse will follow you out. You know. But anyway, um, yeah. So I, I end up going to Kentucky. Um, so it's in the mountains, cold ass mountains, bunch of white people. I lie you not. My first time there, I was driving. And once I get there, it says, I mean, once I got closer to the, the uh, city, it says Pikeville, 28 miles. So I drive another 10 miles and it says Pikeville, 28 miles. I said, coach, like, I, I think I'm lost. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he said, no, nah, you're just going up a mountain. You're just not coming close to us. Yeah, you're still going up a mountain. So it's still 28 miles. I was like, <laughs> but anyway, like I got there. Um, um, ironically, the first day. There's a dude named Big Show. Um, he rest in peace. He transitioned a, a while ago, but he met us at like at this thing called a 99. This is big ass stairs that go up the stairs. But before he met us, like there was this little kid across the street that kept yelling something, and I I, I made it out and it says Coon, and then he ran away and said F and F and N and ran off. And I was like, like this is my first ten minutes in the city. I'm like, this ain't gonna go well. Like, so anyway, I. I got through that um i was already kind of having uh credits and then i working in the radio which is a um a funny story in terms of my uh, work experience credit and started an internship working in radio i was able to not have to take an internship because i had work experience credit i was actually one of the first people in the college 
to submit a form to do work experience credit, which the professor was saying that it couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't be done, could be done, could be done. Then once I did it, she tell everybody they can do it. Um, while in Kentucky, I was uh, my kind of my first, I guess, real experience into organizing. I was working with Kentuckys for the Commonwealth, which is the organization that Avi came and took us to uh, Columbia with. And I was working for a grassroots radio station there called Apple Shop. Um, so I, I was doing journalism. Well, that, that, I'm sorry to cut you off, but that was important because 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 one of the we we I felt like we got a number of of shocked responses to how the hell does he know Avi Chomsky? <laughs> yeah. Like that was yeah. like the most out of left field appearance. <laughs> like it, so it was it was yeah it was it, yeah okay so so it was in you were in college. Yeah, I, well, it, by the time it, I'm. By the time I met Avi, I was that was my that's the year I graduated in 2008. So okay. I was already working that was like in, yeah. Okay, and that was the, tri the trip I was going to. Uh we was going to a trip for there. But um and then I mean I I obviously was kind of blown away. I didn't even know Norm had daughters or kids kids at all, but I was kind of blown away by that. Um and also working for like Apple Shop Radio's uh our, it's a grassroots owned radio station. Ironically, there I meet hoops. Y'all know hoops from um uh, hoops from <laughs> basketball. So look at you. Stop. Hey, from flavor you look, of love. Yeah, flavor of love. Yeah. Oh, so you talking about from basketball. Basketball. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So the the face Jared making was kind of weird because it's actually the face that her boyfriend at the time was making. <laughs> so, so Kentucky had this pro basketball team there. I can't remember the minors or something. And I, I was doing interviews, like so. I was a journalist. I I go around. That's actually where I met Bill Clinton too. When he told me that the reason why we can't stop burning coal, <laughs> we can't stop burning coal because China's burning coal faster than the U.S. So we got you're the worst there. name dropper I've ever seen. <laughs> like you be dropping but, the worst. No, but I but I already said I already said this. I don't though. think you understand the concept of name dropping. <laughs> so, but listen, I already said this. The African keep, Forest Gump over here. <laughs> He, he going to keep interrupting you. I, I said this, if you remember, I talked about what Bill Clinton said to me when Avi was here. But anyway. But so repeat I, I it, though. Repeat it, though. But still, there is still a little bit of a... Okay, so when 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 Clinton was on his, on his, <laughs> on his campaign run for his wife, and he started, like, doing all this other shit, um, I, uh, again, I was a journalist for um, Apple Shot, uh, uh, grassroots radio station. So I would go cover stories and stuff like that. I, ironically, I was doing kind of the same thing at one or two jams, um, going out doing live remotes and stuff like that. But um, I we was asking him questions and we asked him, a, a, a pretty much we're fighting to like regu regulate coal and make sure that they follow rules and stuff like that. And then he ended up we asked him a question of uh, uh, about clean coal, and he was trying to explain that there's a such thing as clean coal, blah, 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 blah. So I asked him a question about uh, alternative sources of energy, and he said, well, you know why we can't stop burning coal? And we was like, why? He was like, because China is burning coal at this rate per minute, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so we in a coal, a coal burning race or whatever? So anyway, but what I was trying to explain about Jared and hoops, so the miners had a basketball camp for kids and I was going there to cover that. And like, obviously Hoops was there. And so I started to interview Hoops, but we, we had to go in a, we had to go in a room, a dark, a, not a dark room, but a room <laughs> by ourselves. <laughs> okay, now, finally. Listen, listen, we had to it's go in a room part. by ourselves so, so we could, so all the noise could be drowned out. And <laughs> the guy, the guy name is James Boo Williams, right? So he's they call him he from he from Michigan or something. He's like the star player on the team. Yo, I just, just want to make sure everybody knows who we I just want to make sure we all know who what what we just we just need to get some of the the, mm -hmm. the, the scenery here, you know, just, just so yeah, we yeah. clean. Didn't she date Shaq? Shaq, yeah, yeah. she date Shaq, Shaq Clown. Flavor and yeah. Shaq gonna beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, flavor, flavor, Shaq. Hey, listen. I, 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 no, I'm sorry. I'm I, sorry. You were in a dark. Be you were in a dark, quiet room where no, <laughs> no one could I, hear. No, no, sorry, no, no, no. To drown no, out no. the sound. Y'all go in this dark room to drown out the sound. So, so listen. I will throw hands with Flav, and I'm, I'm gonna put. I'll, I'll probably have to use some tools with Shaq. But anyway. 
So I gotta go in. I go. I go. I, we gotta go in. <laughs> we gotta go in this room in this like room so we can. So the sound, the sound don't mess up because I had I can't even remember the equipment. Jerry, you probably know some of those you know, little equipments. I don't know anything Record. about equipment in dark soundproof rooms. <laughs> with reality TV stars. Don't put my name in all this. I don't know a thing about none of this. Anyway, so I'm in. I'm I'm interviewing her, and like this dude <laughs> comes. He he's he's facilitating a camp. Like he's he's doing a camp with kids. Like. This joker oh. just leave the camp and come to just check on us to make sure I ain't stole this, <laughs> I ain't stole this girl or something. I was like, what? The? Like, but anyway, that was that was it. That's the moral of the story. The dude, the dude, the dude stopped his camp. To no make morality sure in that story. <laughs> to make sure his. Uh, Geechee to make can't sure his, help uh, it if this man is confessing about the state of their relationship. Hey, I don't know what's going on. Who's like anyway? Man, who's so, got a type? So listen. This is this 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 is 2008. <laughs> and listen, I'm I'm about to, I'm not about to let this dude take shots at me because I you know. <laughs> I'm, this is engaging story. I'm engaging. Who, who who's a type? Uh, tall cats, tall cats like you. <laughs> the other one. The other one. Oh, the tall boy hair cats. Tall boy hair cats. No, like you. That's you, you the one you said you was gonna fight for her. The one you said you were willing to fight. She got a type. That's well, a, if, I, a, if I look if I look like Flavor Flav, then you gotta oh, you remember need who, a, uh, you just missing a clock. Oh, you gotta remember man. you gotta remember who Omar Wally <laughs> said you look like. Just remember that, right? <laughs> Bugs life, Nick. <laughs> your Bugs life. Damn. So anyway, let me, let me, this let ain't me my day. My, this ain't my. This is your day, man. I, I, I your, can't. I, deal I can't with your tell. business. Stay out I my business. I, I can't tell. It's not your day. Stay out uh, my business Diallo. and deal with your business. I can't tell. Interrupt, Diallo. But anyway, um. You make me lose sidetrack of story. This is 2000, this is 2008, right? So we going through the financial crisis and I'm graduating college. So I'm hearing this, oh my gosh, the economy bad, the economy is bad. It's going to be blah, blah, blah. And I'm, you know, I obviously believe it and I'm, I'm in my mind experiencing it. So there's a, um, a NPR opportunity that comes up. And um, I can't remember, is it, we reams i don't remember the name right now but it's a older lady who was pretty rich and she has a fund that there's gets a stipend for journalists to come in and work for npr for a year and whatever so i submit for it i write for it um and the lady write back and tells me like you you would have definitely gotten this but the tone of your letter was that you needed a job and not wanted a job. And I was like, what? Wow. And I, I was like, man, what the? F so now at that time, the stipend was $40,000 and I would have been out of the college, you know, with the stipend and doing the work that I want to do. And I was like, then, but I remember, cause you know, when I was trying to get uh, some, cause uh, playing football, you can't work, which I end up doing working and playing football. And so the scholarship will take care of just everything, but you ain't gonna have no pocket money. So I was convinced to take out loans because at for the first part of the my years there, they didn't let me do work study. They just kept that out of my 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 mind. And then so I took out some loans to have some money. But when I remember when applying for one, the lady was like, she was surprised at how much money I made when I was working in radio and I was working at Radio Shack too, because I was working in sales. And but I remember I made more money than that forty thousand dollars. So I was like, I'm going back to retail. Fuck this radio shit. I ain't gonna do it because I'm thinking like the economy is bad. It's only for it's this low money, and I just got rejected for something that I wanted to do. Um, and then uh, so I I worked in in um retail for a while. Became a district manager for Sprint. Um. It did that in uh, Kentucky, actually, Kentucky, Louisville, Indiana. Um, and after a while, the company was actually sending me to different stores to train employees and managers, right? Um, but they wouldn't pay me to be a trainer. And that's actually what I would want to do. So I remember walking to the, or going to the vice president of sales and like, yo, like y'all already sent me around to do training and all this other stuff. Like, why don't you just make me the trainer? And like, he was like, yo, I feel like you're trying to take power away from me. 
And I was like, like what? Like I'm, I'm literally be doing the thing that you're doing. You pay me for it, whatever. Anyway, long story short, they tried different techniques to get rid of me. Um, they couldn't because I was training the people they was bringing in to try to get rid of me. And then finally they was like, okay, how do we just, you know, how do we get rid of you and you walk away quietly? So they offered me some money to shut up and leave. Again, I'm young at the time and I ain't really, I just, I don't want to deal with it. So I take the money and, and leave instead of like pursuing illegal joints. And at that time, I'm about to name drop again. At that time, I already had met Les Brown, who's this <laughs> famous. He's just, cause I wanted to be a speaker. I was already in, um, what is that thing called? Uh, t- ah, damn. Table talks. What's the little speaking, speaking, um, speaker bureau. Yeah. What's the speak. It's like a speaking group that you can go to learn leadership skills and te- damn, I don't, I'm blanking on it, but they got them everywhere. Like the companies got it. Schools got it. Uh, Toastmasters. Toastmasters. Ooh, Toastmasters. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. Bad. yeah. So oh, I'm wow. in Toastmasters. I'm in Toastmasters. And one of my, one of my uh, members takes me to go meet Les Brown. Cause I was always talking about Les Brown. I saw a Les Brown unstuck video and I was like, mind blown. I meet this guy and he's like pretty much shitty. Um, uh, but at this time, again, okay, I got some money and I, and I said, Les, like, I don't even want you to pay me. I'll come move to you and help you with your stuff. I just want to learn, learn the game. And um, again, they're good. They're going to be writing another letter. Cause I, cause when at the stage he was doing this like altar call type shit where he tried to get uh, people to pay for coaching or whatever. But I was, I thought he was serious when he said like he'll tr- train some people. And um, so I called him the number that he gave me. He never answered it. So I write him a letter. I write him a letter to like both his address. And so one day he hits me back on my phone and said, uh, I read your letter. It's an inspiring letter and blah, 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 blah. And I told him again, like, yo, I don't need money from you. I'm, I'm good. Like, but where I can come to where you at and help you, whatever. The first question this dude asked me is like, how much money you got? And I'm like, what? And I, I, after that, I started kind of like, like, man, you know, because he actually got multiple kids and none of them speakers. Right. And, and <laughs> so if he can't make them speakers, he ain't gonna make me speakers either. I, I figured that out. So like my motivation, though, speaking career was over really quick. Like, it, so that's it where the Geechee motivator handle came from. Kind of. Um, so, yeah, I, I can I can get into that in a second. But yeah, kind, kind of sort of. Yeah. Um, okay. at, at the point I was doing like some work, doing my best to be an organizers and, and um, bring people into like, I guess, dialogues and whatever. And then Geechee motivation, Geechee motivator was like a. Um, a second persona to see that I can attract people in with conscious comedy, which I feel wasn't effective. Um, that's why I kind of stopped. Um, but at that time, I'm like, with the lump sum that they give me and unemployment, I'm going to be making t- uh, maybe like $500 more a month, not working 56 hours and I, so in my mind the numbers just made sense to like just figure it out like people talk about build a plane when they fly so i just started trying to do some shit like um speaking and writing or whatever whatever um so a period of time like i didn't i just didn't have um <laughs> yeah now that i think of it I, I i'm not gonna name drop this time but i'm also gonna i didn't meet and when i was in virginia you know i went to go uh meet a friend who he was at, we went to high school together and he was at um, Liberty University, Jerry Farwell's old uh, place. I didn't meet him. Yeah. But I was in the city. I was like doing this thing where I call like guerrilla networking. Like I just go and meet people and, and try to find opportunity. Now, ironically, I did meet a brother from South Carolina who makes ascots. So you might see some, bit, you might see some pictures out there with me wearing ascots. I'm modeling his ascot. Cause I thought Ascot was cool at the time. And Let me find out. Yeah, he and was on he, your way to Roland Martin. But he did introduce me to Roland Martin too, cause they in the same <laughs> frat. <laughs> yeah. They in the same fraternity, so that did happen. And that, and I almost, I almost swing on him, cause on uh, Roland. Okay. Well, I say I almost swing on, him, but I, I like, I was really turned off by him. So 
again, man, I'm, working, I'm, I'm, I'm working in radio. <laughs> I'm working in radio, so I'm meeting a lot of people. So I, when I met Roland, it was similar to the experience of meeting Fat Joe. Like both of them have like this pompous, like but, Fat Joe literally hey. stick his finger out to somebody to tell him to shake the hand or whatever. So it was like. Look, so, round dudes, they mad strong. Don't <laughs> just because you don't see them, them, them heavy set round dudes are mad. Strong. Yo, be careful. Cat, cats, cats from the country <laughs> of South Carolina, mad strong too. So oh, I'm just, okay. I tried I'm to just, help. I'm gonna let you, you know. Can't help everybody. Don't You're be right. swinging on these roly dudes. <laughs> um, they dense under of gravity, you know, density, right? I'm sure you've been in college, you've had some physics, they're very yeah. dense. Don't swing on rolling. Man. So, but so anyway, I meet the meet the ascot guy. Ascot guy, um, um, uh, Ronnie, and but he he introduced because Lynchburg. I was in Lynchburg, Virginia, so that's where Liberty at. And um, at this is after already living in D.C. and then going to North Charlotte because I'm trying to find my place. Go to Charlotte, and then on my way back to D.C., I stopped in Virginia. But um, he, he he introduced me to, um. Yeah, this is this is great. He introduced me to uh, just uh, University of Virginia Lynchburg College, where again I meet <laughs> a surprisingly really good singer, a guy named Peter Collins. He's a singer now, but I meet him by you know speaking at their college, um. But he introduced me to that. I spoke there. He introduced me to somebody that worked for the city. So I, I did some lunch and learns. And he also introduced me to some somebody at the um, career and college readiness or community engagement department in this Lynchburg City Schools. So that's when I started my first program with young people, um, which called, uh, it's, it's called Teen Panure Mentor Program at the time. What I since changed it to Jegna Program. Which later on, I got another name drop, had me an opportunity to get paid through TI winning a contest that TI facilitated. Um, but so again, this guy, this guy again gives me all this opportunity. So I'm I'm in Lynchburg for a little while, but I, I obviously go back to uh DC and Baltimore and it just came back to kind of do work. Um and I'm, I'm, I can feel you. I mean, I, it'd be easy to ask questions because I'm, I'm probably about to go to, in Baltimore, the work that I was doing in Baltimore, working with like Baltimore City Schools and trying to just pretty much. Um, well, I mean, one question I would want to have just to try to fill in some of the gaps is politically. How did you, I'm always interested in how people reach yeah. certain levels of political consciousness. Um, right. So, yeah. so I, I think, I guess the trajectory was like, I've always had access to like some conscious type people. So like, like for instance, my aunt, one of my aunts. So my mother has a, my mother's mother, my grandmother has eight sisters. So my great grandfather and my great grandmother who I have in my book, they have like nine daughters who are like the staple of the matriarch or the um, foundation of our family. All, all of them are still alive. Um, but my, my, um, one of my aunts, she was always like vegan and all her kids, like, so I've always kind of had access to that. We never ate pork. Um, so I always had this idea of like health in terms of how you eat. Um, and then, like I said, I told you, my uncle used to run with Africa Bambata. So this like African type stuff like I've always kind of had awareness of it but I don't think it ever like resonates so um and then when I was in Greensboro being around talk about name drops that don't age well though yeah it, it don't it don't but you know. um the, that in the OJ one yeah OJ either but he he, he didn't do it because the glove ain't fit but um excuse me right and and <laughs> no, Diallo, take it easy, I, man. He just played. No, no. <laughs> I just noticed that when you said it, he didn't say nothing. When I said the same thing, he started making fun of me and calling me out my name. But when you say it, he didn't say nothing. I'm this, noticing this, 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 this guy. This I didn't guy. even write it down. I just took a mental. <laughs> All right, where I'm at. Um, see, see Diallo. 
<laughs> my bad. No, that's oh my yeah, fault. yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, in, in, in Greensboro, like I'm getting access to maybe like more even some of the conscious community, but obviously it's like entrepreneurial type stuff. So you know, I'll I'll wear a shirt that says "Warning: Educated Black Man Bought from the Little African Shop," shit like that. And in college, like, like I'm I'm because I've always just been this person to like provoke dialogue or kind of listen to the elders as they talk. Like I'm listening to y'all too old ass. And um, this is shot. Yeah. So <laughs> when <laughs> when I get to school again, the organizing part with the you know grassroots white. I mean, there's black people there too. Because even in Harlem, if you ever heard of Bloody Harlem, that's where most of the black people in that's where most of the black people are in um in that area in, in Eastern Kentucky. And Bloody Bloody Harlem is uh there was a big struggle where you know some guns got drawn. In fact, Harry Haywood's first wife was an organizer in Harlem around mine issues. Um, but so I started being aware of those grassroots organizing type stuff then. Um and then obviously, like, you know, having time after I, after they uh gave me um uh, a severance package, I had more time to read and study and stuff, like learn stuff. Like, in fact, I learned more stuff about Gullah culture at that time and kind of like realized why, like one of my professors told me, like, the way I think I enunciate it now, it was a voice and diction class. Her, it's, she said her goal was to make me not sound like this Gullah thing before. She actually even brought one of my homeboys who transitioned to a while back. She brought us in class to talk to each other so she can make fun of us and then pretty much tell me she's going to kill that out of me. Um, like I had so many experiences with that lady. That lady, that, that stories. Um, but I started learning like uh Stuff I learned, read Lala, Lala Africa, Dr. Amos Wilson, and um, and, and again, like this, this making me more interested in being in DC and Baltimore and running with the people. But you know, and at the time, like I, I already met Asafo because Asafo went to Morris with one of my one people I grew up with, so I already kind of met him. We always kind of uh, communicate, and I think he would he he been in the game way longer than me. And he was already kind of tied with the African Center community, but so wait a minute, did Asafo happen? Did he? What, what is the timeline? He didn't run with Ear Doctor, did he? At at the I, Brown University, I don't, I don't think. I don't mean I don't know how old Air Doctor is, but Asafo was like just one year older than me. So okay, I, I'm, right, 30, I, I'm, right, 30, right, I'm thirty. I'm right. thirty. I'm thirty nine, and he would have been forty. Right, 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 um, right. And rest in power to your man, man. So again, yeah, yeah, sorry for all that, man. You know, anyway, yeah. 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 But um, ironically, me and him get into a me and him get into like some internet internet squabbles one time. Like he told me some shit that I was saying was sophomoric, and I'm like, who this nigga talk about? <laughs> but he, he was right though. I was saying some bull, bullshit. Like, but um, so he already got he's getting tired. He's been tired of the African centered community, and I'm like, I'm experiencing the DC and the, and the Baltimore Africa Afri African centered community, and it's like. These cats. And when is this that you were in the DC Baltimore area? What what time so, are we talking about? So so was it in probably probably from so I went in, I was in DC, then I moved back to Kentucky, then I came back to DC in Baltimore. But it's probably since probably since like 2008, 2008, from 2008 up until a uh, couple years, I mean, a couple years ago, the pandemic. Um, and I mean, I'm at, I, and I told people this, like when I was in Baltimore, I thought Baltimore was like the epic center of it all. Like they had different levels of, they got the the health and wellness, the food sovereignty. You know, I, I let, I met B, uh, Dave on and them. So I like, they got the political people. They got the, uh, I know Diallo don't like this, liberation theology with Hebrew. I'm like, damn, they got all these different, factions of African liberation if they can only work together like this should be bamming but it just it, it just didn't work like you, you got soul survivor nation with events and shit like that but it just just wasn't working so I I'm like um so I mean and and maybe like seven or eight years ago that's when we kind of started like obviously doing our individual working and um 
and started Bart and Bill to try to like, I don't know, get a collective of people kind of like politically strong or politically sophisticated or whatever. Um, and also, by the way, like, so I went back to Charleston multiple times to try to like be home. And I, at one time, you know, Boeing is in Charleston and Boeing, I think they're not the biggest company in the world right now. I know, but they run everything at Charleston. And one time this guy uh, was like, yo, I, you know, I appreciate everything you're doing. And, um, but I feel like you need to work under somebody, even if you disagree with them and then move your way up. And I was like, so you want me to go work for a drug dealer? Cause that, that doesn't make sense. I'm not like, if I don't, and he was like, well, I just think it's going to be hard for you to move around in Charleston. And he made this face and I was like, oh, so he pretty much like insinuated he's going to block any type of thing I do in Charleston. So I was like, I, like, I can't really be home when the person who's pretty much controlling the funds in the U and the, and the, and the city is like almost he can stop he can stop or move anything that's going on in the city um so like to me charleston is small as shit and baltimore is, is a little bit so like for instance not not to uh uh tickle your fancy like there will be five jarrets in baltimore six jarrets in baltimore but there's gonna be maybe one jarrett in charleston and then for a sofa case it's going to even be 0.5 in, in Florence and lower. So like South Carolina is like really tough to kind of move around. Um, so I, I was always connected to it, but I'm like, you know, I, I when I was a young boy, I used to go to New York and Baltimore in the summers because one of the nine aunts was in Baltimore and then my grandmother was in New York. So I was always um, up there and, you know, I just kind of went there to move. And so, like I said, I, I was brought in intellectually, like by Amos Wilson's and John Henry Clark's. But I also knew that Amos Wilson and John Henry Clark's was more radical and different than the typical people. So like, I just was more attracted to them. Um, and I think I told you too, like Amos is the one who even get me into l listening to Parenti and other people like that. And um, yeah, so I, I think that that was the like trajectory. And then like over, um, I, I guess I'm, 30 since I was 30. So I'm 39. Since I was 30 is when I kind of, I felt like I've been came, became more um, maybe radical. Like, cause e even early in the stage, I was pushing shit like financial literacy too. Like we did a, we did a financial literacy um, panel in the South Carolina, although I've been asking different type of questions, but it's still that I, you know, I still did the type of panel. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I, I think that's when, like the journey, I think a seed was sown, but I think the journey kind of sped up around age 30, especially after getting, uh, seeing seeing how the company treated me and how, um, this is a book that I'm writing that I had, um, I have a chapter titled uh, The Death of a the Death of an Ambitious Negro and how like any company that you work for, there's a proverbial glass ceiling that they have, have you hitting, um, whether you know it or not. And so I think after experience, experiencing that, at actually multiple companies, I just kind of, um, I, I don't know, I, I guess I just try to got to get into some whatever shit I could. And so I started reading more, more I had more time to read. Um, I did read, I, I think another book that was really important, like uh, Randall Robinson, The Debt That America Owe African People, something like that. Like reading that was kind of like, kind of eye opening too. So yeah, that's my answer. Are you going to talk, uh, some people wanted to know, number one, about uh, Gullah Geechee culture and how you got into that and how that influenced your politics and also about your children's books. Okay. So, I mean, obviously growing up, like, Gullah Geechee culture, like, most of us, well, at least me, I just knew that this is just how we talk or some would even call it an accent. Um so I always, I mean, I've, I've grew up there, so I don't like in terms of getting into it, but I, I would say I didn't study it until college and learn, learning more about it. And, um, I, I might even experience it differently because I know that people are not talking Gullah just because it's cool. And 
when they when it was established, it was to be organized, particularly po politically organized, so that they can do things without being um, hindered by the uh, buckra. So I always kind of push like trying to radicalize Gullah people because at this point I feel we are like split up everywhere. Um, we do have a my, uh, my friend's son, Michelle. He's a Gullah teacher at Harvard. There's a bunch of different uh, BJ, Chef Dennis. He's a, a well-known chef. Uh, I think he's on Netflix, uh, High on the Hog. And so there's a, like a lot of talk around Gullah stuff, but it's not like anything. And then, you know, Fode, he's in, um, he's in uh, Sierra Leone. But like, there's literally no like radical politic, anything in the, in, in that space. So like, I try my best to remind people like, yo, we, ain't, we wasn't just speaking gullah cause the shit sound cool or funny. Like, like there has to be like, it's a tool of organization. Um, and so I guess I've been trying to do that. Like, even that's kind of what Geechee motivated come from. Like, how can I like do conscious comedy and drop some shit in there to like make people inquire about like more radical leaning thoughts. Um, there are no black what? radical comics. Are do we? Is there like how come we don't have like at, con at conferences and stuff? Why don't we have a comedy show with like legit? I mean, I, mean, I, I know I there's, can there's comedians. I can tell. I can tell you. I can tell you. For me, like, I mean, it, it might be, <clears throat> it, it might be similar to what you're saying. Like, you can't be uh, rich and radical, or even maybe famous and radical. Or, but the whole time I was doing this shit, like. Everybody, like I had people in my inbox. I got some crazy inbox too, but I got some people in my inbox literally daily. Like, yo, man, you should do stand up. You should do, and I'm like, I, that's not what the fuck I want. I, I don't want to do that. I, that's not like I can do a lecture. You can bring me to do a lecture, and then I can make you laugh during the lecture. But I'm not about to do no damn stand up. Like, that's not what I want to do. Um, I would do animation and cartoons and shit like that. But so it's like you, I feel like the the um the shit is limiting. And it shapes anything. Like I started doing the, the organizing before I was doing that shit. But once you do that, it's kind of like, oh, that's just a funny dude. That's all, all you do is comedy. Like, so it's really hard to like do that and I guess do other stuff in my experience. And I, I again, I might just be young and get uh, frustrated fast, but I felt like it was really tough for me to uh, do both. And then like, for instance, I got like maybe three or four viral videos and it's all silly shit, right? And the stuff that I'm maybe dropping stuff that I feel like could be cool or could be something that you could look into is like, nigga, nah, we're not trying to hear that. Um, so I don't mean like, I don't mean like a radical comic. I mean like a comic who's doing comedy targeting these spaces. Oh, you got okay, Sadiq? Okay, okay. What about that dude Sadiq? I don't know. I don't know. And you I know. wouldn't say, Ali I wouldn't Sadiq? say, I, I wouldn't say Godfrey. Godfrey, no. No, 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 no. that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I mean. I'm, I'm not talking about somebody who's a, trying a, to a, a comedian who, who audience is within the conscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, yeah, like the equivalent of a radical artist or or people who would sell uh, T-shirts, but why? But they would instead perform Pan African comedy. I mean, Diallo I, can. I mean, that's all. I, I don't. What? Man, <laughs> I'm mad serious. What you talking about, man? This is. I mean, I don't, this is stoic. I don't. This is stoic. Nah, nah, serious. I don't play about this. This is my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play. Nah, but yeah, I I don't know, man. I, I'm again. I'm not. I don't think it's. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not totally against it, but I, I just feel like my experience is like. I, I don't know. Yeah, and I hear. You. I'm just really curious. Really harder. Um. Just uh, there are some questions that I highlighted. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of them. Uh, thanks, uh, Animus Prime, uh, for the super chat. Uh, love you guys, Dr. Bald Myth of Black Pine Power saved my mental health. Uh, thank you. Keep up the fight. Shout out to Geechee. I'm from Somerville. Well, thank you very Som much, Animus. Somerville. Some Somerville has a high percentage of black folks, and from historical ball chasers. Somerville has a coach named John McKissick football. He was the most winning, winningest coach in the whole wide world. Like out of all the 
coaches in the world, he he won the most games, mm. particularly because he used to recruit players in high school. So so he would literally move players from different cities and country, I mean, in states to play for his team and get their coaches, a, I mean, their parents a job and stuff like that. But yeah, some of Somerville is. You got to do what you got to do. Ball chasing. Ball chasing. Uh, that's funny. I thought I thought Geechee do Avi or some J Electronica stuff. That's funny. Oh, oh, oh wow! Wait, wait. I'm wow. I don't know about that joke. Reckless. I missed that joke. And then What's he, the J when did you get Why on the FB? Now B is just having some fun in the chat. Wait, wait. What? What is the? What is the J? You know what? Well, no, he, he dated you know, a rock child. Like, yeah. Sorry. Say that again, Diallo. J oh. Electronic seduced and infiltrated the Rothschild <laughs> crime family. <laughs> That still to me is the wildest. I don't think I've ever, I still don't understand that maybe more than any other relationship I've ever heard about. Uh, but he that, repented. He joined the, the nation of Islam. Let's see if, let's see if Monty, Monty can see. All right. So let's see if you can translate this. Uh, Uma, Uma Fasmat. Uma Fasmat. <laughs> so go ahead and try to translate that. But go ahead, what you were saying, I, I didn't know about the J Electronic stuff. And like I said, I met Avi through some organizing I was doing with some. It was just, it was just, he was having yeah, fun reckless. right there. That, that, oh, that. yeah, yeah, I ain't know. Uh, <laughs> Gigi has a book. Yeah, yeah. I got, um, oh, damn, Jerry, I was about to send you. So, yeah, I got, I got a couple books. I got, so again, in my motivational speaking days, I thought I was trying to like, you know, they kept talking about you need to do products and stuff like that. So I did sell, I did, I, I did uh, publish a little self-help book at first. It's called Succeed. It was bullshit. Um, and then I, I wrote the children's book, Raising Me. And then, um, and I'm actually publishing another book. I'm actually working with somebody, a BPM chat member who's an artist, Faith. She's illustrating our, uh, our, um, latest children's book and it's kind of like a, a folk tale an african folk tale to undo what uh paul bunyan and his blue ox did so oh, we word. got up but wait a minute up. yeah my bad go ahead no so it's it's uh um so it has gullah words in there a couple case swahili words and obviously english words um but mama mop and doozy uh baba umkambozi and the african gray bird majumbi they uh doing their thug thizzle I'll say, I'll, go ahead. Well, well, I want to see all of that, but I also think I want to be in touch with Faith. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if Faith has room in, in, in the work schedule, there might be some other contracts that, 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 that are on the table we could put on the table. So, so let's, let's, let's. I'm sure, I'm sure she'll be happy to hear that. And she's probably watching. So, boom, shout out, Faith. So, yeah, shout out. Uh, Nabi does have something a little more serious. Uh, what about the whole Geechee Gullah land connection? How was that politicizing in your, in your. So, so, I mean, obviously, they're like any other African people, they're losing land at a rapid race, a rate. Um, and, and so it's tough because, again, we like hella politically disorganized. So, there's a woman who titled herself Queen Quet. Um, and then there's obviously four day in Africa, but then there's like different factions of it and nobody is like literally con organized at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I mean, I don't know if that answered your question, but there's no, there's no collective well, fight for the way I took like, it was, was, was the, the connection within the Gullah people to the land politicizing for you and your your development as you were coming up oh. did that help politicize you did just that that well, general no because no I, I don't think no not really because um so for instance i knew like even like the nine daughters the grandfather him my granddad and his brother they had like 50 acres and they gave like 25 a piece to their family and and my uncle, I'm not my uncle, I'm sorry. My granddad's brother, he actually he actually sold both of the both of the both of the 50 acres to some white man. And then my aunts had to struggle back and get it. Um mm. but so like there's been always this rapid like land capture from from people in that area. Um and uh but that didn't politicize me because I mean at the time I didn't I mean I knew I learned about this as I got older, right? So 
once I started reading more about Gullah people in school, I'm started asking my family members and people questions and started getting more awareness because again, like the goal for Gullah people is to be acculturated into some formal English type shit. So mm. like you're, you, you're not, it's nothing that you're really taught to celebrate or whatever. You just more so y'all talk funny. You need to speak like this and say proper thing. And mm. so, and, and, and you can't see a thing like I script what going on way as you can't do talk like that because that shit ain't going to work in school or whatever. That's what it is, so. Wow. Okay. Um, and was your uncle a Zulu in the Zulu nation? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. But also like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so my uncle transitioned on some on weird, some some real crazy shit that made me suspect that he might have been helping. I don't know. He just might have been something for uh, uh, what I do name is Bam and them that I wouldn't be proud of. But like he 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 was a rough guy mm -hmm. from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Lee on this. I like that word buck rough. Yeah. Yeah. Is there Bucker is there is a particular a, history and origin of it that you can? So it's it's a it's equivalent to uh, gringo, right? So uh, Latino people call it like so it's pretty much white colonizers, people who are, um, yeah, white colonizers, enslavers, the enemy. Zungu. <laughs> uh, in a deal in the real, OJ did not do it. Anyone who paid I mean, attention. Listen. Knows listen, this, Diallo. I felt like he was saying Diallo in that. Listen, the the movie, the little uh, the little, did it. Like like the doc, the documentary came out, and so when uh when it was happening, like you know all the football players, he was kind of like, yo, we about to ask Coach Saban what's happening, and we asked him, and he was like, well, OJ was a good guy, and I don't think he would ever do like, but uh, in fact, I think even I think um. He he's the uncle or grand uncle of Nick Saban, but he he was old as shit. He was like in his eighties, eighties or nineties when I, I don't know. But well, you know. the jury said he didn't do it. That's the end of it. <laughs> That's the end of it. There but it if I he he wrote that book. But if I did do it, <laughs> if he had done, how <laughs> he would have gone about it. <laughs> but the old woman on the jury who's depicted in the la in 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 the in the OJ Made America series, I think is my favorite person on, on, on that whole thing. And I mean, she basically was like, I'm not sending him to jail. And yeah, yeah. and it, it it just was what it was. And it was like, she was just like, I just wanted to go home. So we voted, <laughs> she was just like, they had us in this joint with no TV and no radio for a year. I wanted to go home. We remembered the 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 Rodney King joint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nobody so about to ride for OJ though. So, I don't think. No, so, of I, course not. I'm with you on that. I'm not trying to do all that. I just I thought see, it was that she was hilarious in terms of just the way she was just like whatever. <laughs> I so like, I, okay, I see. Um, saying? I see. You a know, couple it people, was. Uh, I see a couple people mentioning Son in the show uh, uh, in the uh, chat. If y'all want, we can bring Sun on to interview him at, at any point. So he, like I said, he's a Gullah professor at Harvard. I did, yeah. I did, I did speak to his uh, class a couple of times. He brought me to speak to his class a couple of oh, times. So I, finance rebel. Uh oh. Okay. So I'm pretty sure he'll he'll love to come come and chop it up with us. Hey, I'm I fun. would love all of that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's 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 yeah. all of that. So, fellas, just just time check, just time wise, is there is there more we want to get to? What do you, do we want to? Are there more questions that I missed or comments or anything you wanted to share that we want to, or do we want to? What do we want to do? Proceed and continue. Proceed. Rock All right, Mike. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's let me let me let's let's just use this as a quick transition, and then we can move on. Let's. <laughs> That's it. There we go. All right, fellas. So we want to want to do with the the headline story and then have some fun at the end, or do we want to just keep pushing to to wrap with that one? I mean, which both of them headlines to me? Which headline story are you talking about? Well, I was talking about the lawsuit and the the whole um, irritated genie piece. 
Oh, 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 I thought we was gonna talk about uh oh T D snakes. Oh, that's cool too. <laughs> I mean, Let's pull that yeah, up we can, too. We can go to T D then the Okay, cool. All right, let's go to T D Jakes. Um, so let me see which which oh damn, I lost the link already. I mean, I I mean, I mean, I feel like y'all not giving him his pro his uh proper name. His name is T D Pro Cop. Pro State Jakes. Oh, see, I call him TD. TD Snakes. Well, he's he's TD Pro Co. I mean Pro Cop Pro State Snakes. Oh, right. I can give him Snakes. We don't give him Jakes no more. So you're right. So right, TD so Pro my... Cop Pro State Snakes. So we can um, we can start with this just to get people caught up in case anybody misses. First of all, this was the story I was I I love that that I feel like we got a number of. Please deal with this on Earn Your Liberation. And I love when that happens. So so here we go. We're revealing a very exciting announcement. It's coming from Bishop T.D. Jakes. The T.D. Jakes Group and Wells Fargo are announcing a 10-year partnership to build communities for all income levels. Now, this partnership includes a commitment of one, up to one up billion dollars with a B from Wells Fargo to help pay for various projects. Their first project is a mixed income housing and retail development outside Atlanta. The nearly 95 acre property is a former army base, Fort McPherson, which is right next to Tyler Perry Studios. I just want to, that part, I wanted to just stop for a quick second and have it. Yeah, just the sound be. of military base, <laughs> Tyler Perry, Perry Studios, TD Snakes. I mean, this is so, so in, the, in the land of Cop City, I was just going to say, like, this that, is, yeah, listen, what happened to the black Mecca of Atlanta? <laughs> but, but here's, here's the funny thing. So you remember, um, Soul City, right? Yeah. So, so the same shit happened with Soul City. Like that was the black area. And now it's fucking prison. So. Maybe go. this is the TD Jakes is the only, only, group is only good can come out of an area with all the police, military, TD Jakes, and Tyler Perry. The conglomerate of four business units, TD Jakes Wells Ministries Fargo. and TD Jakes Foundation, those are nonprofits, while TD Jakes Enterprises and TD Jakes Real Estate Ventures are for profit entities. TD Jakes Whoa. himself also presides over the Potter's House Church, but the church the is not affiliated with this Wells boy. Fargo partnership. We welcome. Yeah, what'd you say? That a white boy about to press him. Watch out, a white boy press him. Come, you bishop. It's so good to have you at the. Oh, thank you okay. for having me. It's good, good to be with you. Yeah. Clearly, so you have a lot going on in your life, but explain exactly how this is going to work, and why you wanted to do it now. I think it's imperative. The fierce urgency of now indicates to us the fact that the future looks very bleak, particularly for minorities, uh, black people, brown people, and also poor white people who are finding it difficult, workforce people to find a job, mm -hmm. to find opportunities to get housing, to get upward mobility, to have communities that are built in uh, repressed neighborhoods and revitalize the community, giving the homeowners who live there or people who lived in the community a chance to stay there for affordable rates. So this is an exciting moment for us. We're really, really thrilled to be able to do it. So Wells Fargo is committing to up to a billion dollars to fund these projects, pay for is what, the way we put it. That's not a donation, right? That's an no, investment. No, no, no. They want to make money off it. Well, no, no, it's not. A, I don't know what they want to do, but it's not a donation. It's a commitment to do. supporting I don't know what they want to do. communities that have been repressed. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know Go what back. they want to do, and you no, in partnership and... Have, did he read the contracts? This nigga. <laughs> he literally hey, said, I don't know what they want to do. Hey, listen. You I'm need to get Mr. Fargo in here to answer them questions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. listen I, I'm going to tell you what he didn't read. So when, when, when black people get into these contracts, they just look at the money. They say billion. The contracts are up to a billion. No but even before. Well, but wait. Even for that, it says cautionary <laughs> statement. Cautionary statement about forward-looking statements. The release contains forward-looking statements about our future business because forward-looking statements are based on our current expectations and assumptions regarding the future. They are subject to inherent risk and uncertainties. So that's Wait, in his time. Read that first. The, where where the subject to what? What was the first part? Subject to what? Cautionary. Cautionary statement about forward looking statements. And this release contains forward looking statements about our future business. 
because forward-looking statements are based on our current expectation and right. assumptions regarding the future. They are subject to inherent risks. Inherent risk. That was the word. And, Sorry. And yeah. uncertainties. Yeah. Inherent. So Inherent meaning built into the system of theft that they call capitalism yeah. is risk. Duh. It's a listen, but can we also because I look at one, one more thing. It says do not unduly rely on forward looking statements as actual results could differ materially from expectations. But I don't know For what they won't do. <laughs> Go ahead, Diela. Diela should I, call I'm just Mr. Fargo. <laughs> you see that the, the, the incestuous relationship between his ministries and his enterprises. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh. Oh, it's some like shit. they're they're all inter. I mean, he could mm -hmm. be looking. I'm just saying, be careful because the government. You know, there's sometimes mm -hmm. these Negroes don't know. They give you enough ro uh, rope to hang yourself because. Can I, There's a lot of overlap. We could come back to the video, but I when 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 Diallo says incestuous, I just want to in this relationship. I just want to like this is his website, so you can see and 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 as all of the the various pieces of his enterprise float around, literally float around him on the screen, uh, all in partnership: the ministry, the investments, the real estate, the the for-profit side, the not-for-profit side, the the the, the religious side, the business side. I mean, he's and then you know, but I don't know what they want to do because right. But but you know, you know it's, it's ironic though because even this, if he said he don't know what they want to do, when he um talked to the CEO Charlie, he knows that Charlie um just recently said that the reason why they don't have diversity at the bank because the vac the uh. The black talent pool is very limited. Like, so is this about and, to be? Is this is this the part where he's responding to to to, to the Buckers challenge? Yeah, yeah, he, he responded to the Buckers challenge, but like Cause, cause, Charlie, Ch Charlie was doing some shit for a long time after which um right two black two black calls the launder and black rage. Even after George Floyd, he still was doing some fuck shit. That's so, right. But, but ultimately, ultimately, we focused mm -hmm. in on TDJs when it's smelling like. That whole Jay-Z, <laughs> everybody thought Jay-Z was owning the and coming to be a big property developer in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yep. With, with the Barclays Center. Yeah. And his name and face. And he was doing all the interviews and had all the press releases and ribbon cuttings. And, it, and it, that's what it's starting to smell like. And he, I, had, I thought, what, me. One, he had like, what, 0.5% of one stock? Exactly. Stock so these, these, these the yellow, foreign oligarchs, these Russian and Russians, and, and, yep. and, and Arab oil oligarchs and 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 CD investors and money launderers and, and venture capitalists come in and they come to an area and be like, who's the most prominent Negro we can <laughs> put up front? Dial, I thought you was gonna do the house party stuff. I smell, I smell. That's what I thought you should have. You should have. You should have. You should have come like that. You should have come like that. I smell tokenism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was was Wells Fargo your only option on this, or or what made you comfortable with Wells Fargo? And the reason I ask that is, you know, they have a recent history. Uh, in fact, just in December. They uh, paid a $3.7 billion uh, fine to settle um, uh, accusations of illegal overdraft fees, illegal fees tied to car loans, illegal fees tied to mortgages. This is money they were taking out of the pockets of low income wow. people that you're trying. So just to be clear, they paid more than three times in fines what they're giving potentially to this one project. Listen, uh, listen, Mr. Fargo always been good to me. I don't, I don't know what you, Mr. Fargo, always been good to us. No, his answer the way DG got it right. Now. His answer. Right, and, and and that's exactly the reservations that I had with them as well. Initially, several Lies. years ago, when they talked to me, I would not do Lies. business with them for those very Lies. reasons. Uh, that's so is that documented? I didn't look. Lies. But is it documented I, that he didn't I, I, that he turned he them told, down? Listen, I. I ain't the best researcher. I ain't the best researcher, but I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. What he was so, saying is, you need to get that number up. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get that number up. No, he said, I don't play about my people. <laughs> the wow. See, I, don't, I don't play about my people. Step off. You can't exploit my people. And then listen, go listen. With me. That's listen, what he did this, and said. This dude from West, this dude, he's from West Virginia, close to where I went to school at, and he moved 50 families. 
he had enough money to move 50 families from West Virginia to Texas. So he's always been about his money. I mean, I don't know if Cleflo Dollar got shit on TD Jakes at this point. Mm. Go ahead, hit mm. it up. This administration, they have a new leader now. They have a new administration, and they're beginning to right some of the wrongs. This is not going to right it all at once, yeah. but it is a start toward uh, justifying and rectifying some of the mistakes that have been made previously. Yeah, the other reason is, is when other banks. Uh, Niggas always talking about he's going to right some wrong when they get a check. <laughs> Jay Z did the same shit. Like this ain't the. Me getting into the weed business ain't going to change all the criminali criminalization of weed, but we, it's a start in the right direction. Isn't it? Yeah, giving me a whole bunch of money is a start in the right direction. Yeah, let me stood get that back check. and looked. Yeah. Wells Fargo stood up yeah. and said, you know, I'm willing to make this unlikely alliance, this very uh, unique yeah. alliance. Uh, I've written a book called Disruptive Thinking, and this disruptive yeah. alliance yeah, it between us is designed to lift up <laughs> underserved, <laughs> underrepresented communities. What do you get out of this, Bishop, being involved in this partnership? First and primary thing for me is legacy. You know, it's it's a legacy piece for me. I want to give back. I want to do something for uh, people who have been loyal and I, faithful to me. And people I got that a question. I so let me let me make sure. Let me make sure. Is this brother saying his legacy is going to be helping the cops get weapons and surveillance technology with very little public oversight? Is like that's his legacy? It's for, Honestly, I don't, he probably wouldn't answer it that way, but I actually, when I watch this, <clears throat> and even as I'm watching it again, I actually, this is the part where I think he is being the most sincere. I really do believe that part of it is beyond just financial and all of that, 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 and I'm saying this based on the former, uh, the, 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 um, specifically what, 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 uh, the former Dean uh, in my former school of communication said uh, openly that this was about his legacy. And I think it's used to justify a whole, yeah, he's a pastor. Yeah. And I think, a and I think he's a bishop different, a bishop. man. Y'all don't, man. No, 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 right. no. Listen, don't even he, know how it work. He's, he's a mega, <laughs> he, he's a mega pastor. He's a, a mega bishop. Pastor. He's a bishop. Matter, a matter bishop fact, is, a, is not a pastor. Matter of fact, He's a mega, he's a mega whatever, but one more name drop. <laughs> so we actually, in Mons Corner, we got another mega pastor. His name is Stephen, Fer Stephen Furtick in, um, in Charlotte. So he grew up with us too. But him and Stephen Furtick, they like the top two. He the black, like he the black mega pastor. And Stephen Fer Furtick is replacing Joe Olstein. So them cats got money and influence and power beyond yeah, some and, shit. So. And let me tell you something. At least people, y'all, y'all get the leadership y'all deserve at this point, man. I'm oh sick of this. Boy. This is a mess. <laughs> and and black, no, my 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 younger brother is a big. He's he has hold every book T D Jakes has written. He has women opt out loose. He he had paid. He's seen T D Jakes's movies. He is a big supporter of any, all things T D Jakes, and he lives down in Atlanta and 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 supports and 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 rubber stamps everything. This this you know human pimple does and i just gotta tell you i mean y'all y'all lifted these scumbags up i mean we carried him creflo dollar and and price in la and the late Eddie long great long stroke so <laughs> i mean mess so we, we and i know uh y'all don't like me calling us out you know i know i nobody like blaming the white man more than me but black folks how we how we let these dudes get out front? Come on now, they don't even pretend, pretend to be about us, and, and and they don't even hide the scam, and the, and and then they come with these weak ass projects that they even tell you, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what it is, I just got my name on it. Uh -oh, you know they so, selling us. So again, I I don't, listen. Me and Steve, well, me and Steve and had the same type of relationship. Me and Charlotte, man, but Stephen Furtick sung in the gospel choir. He was the only white boy on the black gospel choir that my sister sung on. I play football with his brother, but I want to know more about this because I, I do know there's some bullshit that you've been doing, but Big Teal, if you got some other shit, you should sh share that. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, we should have been over after Reconstruction era. This religious leadership, the reverend, pastor, minister, leaders, shit is obsolete, you know.
it's obsolete and it's disgusting and it's tired. How is it 2023 and we still got ministers, pastors and bishops being at the forefront of any type of development, whether it's on, I mean, on the level or but, corrupt? But, but you but you acting like the politicians don't go to the churches when they need to get shit in the community. So I don't. That's a slap. Like, that's an insult to us. That's enough. That's I mean, right. Yeah. They go to, to where we give our, you know, Dick Gregory said who you give your money to is who you give your power to in terms of that's the voice. Black folks show up at church every time I'm out Sunday morning. Every church parking lot is overflowing. Every church parking mm -hmm. lot in this city is overflowing. And as Amos Wilson said, um, the level of dysfunction, the level of misery, the level of exploitation in a community is directly proportional to the number of churches in the community. Hmm. Well, I think, go ahead, <laughs> Jerry. Go I don't ahead. have anything to say. I, that's why I was saying we need a church. We need a revolutionary church. Not, not, and I don't, and again, I'm not saying revolutionize religion. I'm saying we need something that mimics the pageantry and the welcoming and the good vibes on a weekly basis and the sermons can be political education. And, but I mean, I think we need music. I think, I think I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm totally sold on. I, I, after we went to church a couple weeks ago to see my man's choir, I'm like, I'm in there. Like, I don't believe none of this and I'm loving <laughs> it. You know. And I'm like, we, and yeah. I just like, we, and it, it, cause it's the whole thing when the old women were greeting and it like, come on in. Oh, the baby. Oh, <clears throat> it was beautiful. And so, I yeah. mean, but I get you. I'm, I'm with, I mean, but, but other than that, I mean, I'm with you. I have nothing to say. I mean, I'm, I can't stand it. And, and, so, and now that I'm on the, the Hickory Ridge village board yeah. and the revolution has like begun, I am going to, and, and the revolution has, has begun out here. Tree line streets. I am going to, I am going to, uh, I am, one of the issues I, I am going to put on the table whenever it's, whenever it's appropriate is, or not appropriate, is this issue of the increasing churches, revolutionary hymns, all of that. I'm saying. All we got that. all that. It's, I, listen, just, it's like listen, you said, it's we not do. I'm just saying, but we need the yeah. weekly performance and the gatherings. That's what I'm saying is part of what helps church do what it does is that. I mean, I'm, the, is, I don't even remember we tried to implement this in Mama's Biscuits when 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 Questlove said you have to have band day. You have to have every week the band has to get together. If the band is going to survive, you have to have you have where you're not playing. You're just gathering as as family, socializing. But, and but we there's don't a do part we miss. It. But there's a part that's missed in, in that strategy, which I've seen that strategy It's something we ignore about these churches. When we say, OK, we got to mimic and provide because I've been part of movements and organizations that have all said, you know, what do the churches do? You know, providing community, providing a place of culture and an emotional outlet and fulfillment and the charity and all that. But another thing that they do is they're not shy about their opposition. About the demons and the hellfire and the damnation. Whenever I opened a bookstore. In, in 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 Brooklyn and the surrounding churches and it wasn't it was a Haitian um like a Haitian fundamentalist church there's all the Christian churches the pastors in that church told their parishioners don't go into that bookstore so we try to when whenever we want to be revolutionary we try to be sensitive and respectful and cooperative with the religious community while they're literally undermining any form of radicalism, any form of African consciousness, African traditionalism, African myth and folklore is demonic and dark and backwards. So if we do all of this, but still we're trying to talk tolerant and respectful of Islam and Christian, you can't, you can't expect to lead black people while disrespecting Islam. You can't expect to be a black leader and change things for black people while disrespecting Christianity. And at the same time, Christianity and Islam have shown no regards, no respect, no level of tolerance and acceptance of anything traditionally African or radically politically African. They, the ministers get up in the pulpits on regular Sundays denouncing the very things we stand for in terms of liberation, independence, uh, pan-African unification. So if you do that, 
If you do say, hey, we're going to mimic the church in order to 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 uh, uh, gain some level of influence and status amongst our people, the same that the church has, you're going to have to call out the churches and take an oppositional stance and have a subversive agenda against the church and the mosque and the temple and the synagogue. So so all I'm saying. So check this out. Imagine that right there. After you have been welcomed into a space, greeted warmly, seated, heard some good music, Nina Simone, something appropriate, you, you know, whatever. Choir does a little version of, you know what I would actually like to see performed in, by choir? Some of those Elaine Brown songs uh, uh, that she wrote back in the day, you know. But anyway whatever it is, and then you get the Diallo sermon in the middle of all of that. But, it, I but would, instead you in got... all seriousness, and I, I'm not joking at all, if that was happening every week in the context of these discussions in politics, I would be there every, as, as often as physically possible. That's all, I, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm not talking about the, I'm, I'm, I'm not, the content is I'm in largely in agreement with you, Diallo, is what I'm saying. I'm saying the it's it's the it's the rest of the performance that is so I found so beautiful and would would is what is what I think is part of the big draw for the people, even beyond the message that I know they believe and get and agree with. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead, Geek. Yeah. No, no, I was just saying like. Obviously, the, the the church is, well, I guess what we call in church is huge, and there's different churches. So you you can have an experience with the religion, but you can't say that that probably don't happen in some churches, be it in the U.S. or another place. But like, I, I so one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of T.D. Jakes talking about disruptive partnerships, right? So if, as Diallo say, the church is one of the groups that tear our community up, the banks are also another part that tear our community up. And so this partnership, exactly what is it disrupting? And I, I saw a video of, D, uh, damn, I'm about to call him Diallo. T.D. Jakes hosting a panel with all cops. And he said, we always hear, if you got to listen to people, you got to hear both sides of the story. And then he had a panel with all cops. And I'm, I'm starting to think that this little Wells Fargo deal that panel was an audition for this Wells Fargo deal. Because T.D. Jakes was really soft. And like they even played that video with a cop saying that, you remember that white, the white old man that the cop pushed down and his, he hit the floor and his head was bleeding? You remember that mm -hmm. video? Mm -hmm. yeah. The cop was like, oh, uh, at that time, he was trying to help him up. And the other cop stopped him from helping up. And I'm like, that's a, that's a narrative. But what if you realize that the dude who's trying to help him up was the main dude who pushed him. And maybe he was going on the ground to punish him some more and he got stopped. Or maybe he saw blood and he was like, oh shit, I done messed up. Like, But T.D. Jakes literally had a, a panel full of cops pretty much trying to humanize and get you emotionally connected to the cops. And so I'm pretty sure with, you know, the, on the board, on this, on the Cop Foundation board, there's a Wells Fargo guy. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mitch uh, Grawl and and other people. I, I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure that's it. That was his little audition to get a contract as such in Atlanta and, and other and places. Can we say this billion dollars ain't no real money at this scale of type of project? I mean, that's why they said up to and and up these to. these these private enterprises. They're not putting real money up. That's that that's purely. PR, you know, I'm sure their advertising budget is much. Like, so whatever they build is going to be either be extremely shoddy construction or they got to have some plan down the line to, to, to get the government. What's going to actually happen is that the government will probably come in, the, the, the city or state government will probably have to come in, fill in the gaps and the people end up paying and it's going to be public private while uh, TD and the people at the top abscond with the funds. You know, but, but listen, I mean, this has happened way too many times in way too many cities for us to even be even entertaining the fact that this thing is going to work at all on behalf of the people they claim they're there to serve. But ironically, 
your boy Eric Adams already called Wells Fargo out for PR. Because Wells Fargo, again, after the George Floyd stuff, again, shout out to Two Black for um, laundering Black Rage. They still was doing shit. And Eric Adams supposedly, um, after he realized that they were still doing the, the BS, he supposedly um, stopped opening new accounts, uh, depository accounts for them. Um, because while while during this part, they were still re they were still denying refinancing homes for black people up to 50%, but approving 70% of white people. So they were still doing a bunch of shit, even after they right. said that it was gonna do something different. So right now. With TD Jakes, they're doing the same thing, and they have it in in this clause. Like again, it's a forward looking statement. A forward looking statement means but, your ass might your, your ass might get ten dollars, and we're gonna say, well, the market only yielded ten dollars. Right. And I, I I really can't rock with the banks or and the churches thing because even if you if you in the community, people understand the banks are a necessary evil, whereas the churches are looked at as the solution or salvation. So even though the banks and the churches are really bad, it's a different. I mean, the churches are much more insidious, even though the banks are much more powerful and do a lot more damage. It's easier to organize, rally or at least get people to entertain the fact that the banks in our community are there for an insidious purpose. And they might be a necessary evil, but you, you're you not going to get people cursing you out or going crazy when you say, hey, these banks ain't no damn good. Like you get uh, uh, denounced and threatened. If you say the same thing about the churches and the mosque and 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 the 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 indoctrination that the churches and the mosque engage in, oh, the sweet by and by, and you'll get yours in the hereafter, makes us vulnerable to the banks and other um private and public uh oppressive institutions. We wouldn't be so damn vulnerable if we didn't have these strong, deep-seated, multi-generational delusions that religion I, I, I think sometimes it gets confused. I think it sometimes get conflated though, because one thing to talk about the church and the bank, and then talk about individuals who happen to still be under the church or individuals who work for the bank. So, for instance, if there's somebody who can get shit done and have the same politics as you, but happen to be at church, I think it's more so of, I, I don't know, like if, if it's a broad stroke of something, the person who's in the church but also have the same politics as you is also demonized or, or thrown into right. the fire as well. So, I think. Some people are arguing the individuals within the church as opposed to the church. I don't yeah. think nobody would disagree that the, the church been doing some shit. Yeah, especially and like TD Jakes. It's a straight up Trojan horse. I hope after this is all said and done, he'll be in a cell right next to Young Thug because that Atlanta prosecutor ain't playing. That sister is hardcore. I mean, if I was going to do some thuggery or some corruption, I wouldn't mess around in Atlanta right now because that sister. But, but, she ain't. but listen, I hope they bring his, his, his bloated ass in for Rico too. <laughs> Listen, man, the dude, the dude is trying to perform economic justice. You know, he has a word, word of faith concept of uh, guaranteeing health and wealth. Like, there's some other pastors who are actually called him out and be like, yo, his little word of faith concepts is bullshit because it's guaranteeing black people or people, his congregant, because he actually has a mixed crowd, health and wealth. But so he just focused on economic justice. So like Jared said in that clip, he seemed really sincere about, you know, making sure black people get their well, I mean, I do, well, I mean, I, I do my my really my point is that I do believe uh, and, and and I understand it a little bit as I get a little bit older here is that I, 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 I do believe that they want to leave a legacy. And I believed and I think that that becomes part of what already exists is a, a, like a panoply of flaws to justify all of the behavior that they engage in. It, it, it helps them along the way. And, and if they accumulate uh, more bodies, literally or figuratively, they don't it doesn't matter because the legacy becomes more important. Um, and what what they think the masses will remember of them is more important than what they do to individuals they'll trample along the way. Um, and so I do think that's part of it. And I and I think he was sincere in that part um, because, again, it helps him do what he's already so, wanted to do so th this i don't know if y'all remember like the community and re uh the com community reinvestment act mm -hmm. like this is nothing more than that like and it could be because sometimes 
No, most of the times when banks tell about they're going to give you up to a million dollars, that can mean money that they paying their employees to come give you some financial literacy classes. Um, so like, I'm, they've been doing this shit even before it's public. Like banks go to churches all the time, just as well as they go to schools and different. I um, mean, the rest of, we didn't play the rest of the clip, but I mean, most of it. I mean, it's the same thing. It's 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 home ownership. It's mm-hmm. um, uh, small business loans. Small business loans. I mean, it's not it. it yeah. So it's not. And it, and we're gonna skip over the fact that Atlanta has the highest income inequality in the United States, which is saying a lot because. The United States has the highest income quality in the world. It's, aside it's, from like some of these small, like uh, the what do you call those those uh, fiefdoms, those those uh, oil oligarchies and fiefdoms. But I mean, as far as the uh, so-called developed nations, the colonial I mean, nations, it has the that, highest. So that's saying a lot. I haven't checked it lately. I know it was in 2019, but you got to remember, Killer Mike got paid and he's creating jobs, so it might have changed. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go get him. Somebody need to consult <laughs> Wells Fargo. They digging in the crazy. Oh, Chase yeah. don't don't Chase Chase already got him though. Chase got him, right? Didn't Chase help him? Oh, they, they they don't him? they don't share. No, man. That's they, you know, oh yeah. Oh, this is like, like Paul chasing, you know, in, like, in, in, in the token Negro draft. They like could get a better pick than old tired, dusty, crusty. Mm-hmm. Or wasn't like, Wells Fargo oh, one of the original funders of Greenwood? Along with J.P. Morgan and Bank of America, I'm not sure, but but yeah, if everybody's that. running to whatever big white financier yeah. they can say is going to back Black liberation. And every one of these companies need uh need some token uh, uh Trojan horse in order to uh, front for their their uh, insidious in the era of social media and 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 instant branding and influencers. So all these projects, they always got some prominent Negro up front. But, so, but I didn't y'all ain't know. know. Y'all ain't know T.D. Jakes was a prophet. So he had this concept of the parable of the sower, right? He was really talking about Wells Fargo when he first started. So they're the sower and it's a parable about them. Oh, so wow. you got to deep. It's a, mind, it's a mind thing. See, y'all got to be deeper than what y'all doing now. But if you yes. if if you read uh, Octavia <laughs> Butler, you know mm-hmm. uh, the Parable of the Sower is a dystopian novel full of cannibalism and 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 misery. So, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, she knew what she I was talking about. I can see that about. coming together. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. anyway. I I go with uh, Octavia Butler's um, version of the parable, not T D Jakes. <laughs> So, so uh, fellas, yeah, I mean, there's but, a, but there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for us to. We don't have to physically go there, but when him and the owner or the CEO talk, um, there's you can uh, Black Power Media can go there because there's a press option to get there. So if y'all want to, if you if you two want to go there and listen in virtually and ask questions, that's oh. a Black Power Media press. Yo, <laughs> uh, and allow City. me, allow me to to to, to fix some things because now that people threatening to sue, earn your liberation. What I said about the, the, the good bishop is allegedly, <laughs> is allegedly, he's allegedly a bloated Trojan horse scumbag piece of shit. You know, I suspect so that, you know, in order, <laughs> so when they played it's in the courtroom. <laughs> Damn, D- Diallo, you know what I, I mean, you're what? costing us a bunch of money. We don't when get a bunch of money. you us. <laughs> you're getting us sued every damn week. Bro. I, you I saw I fixed it. it. You throw that word alleged <laughs> in there and everything is fixed. <laughs> Oh my God! I said he's an alleged pimp, preacher, scumbag, prosperity ministry, delusional. I alleged. So, right? so <laughs> since 2004 to 2009, Wells Fargo has harmed Black and and Hispanic communities through engaging in discriminatory lending practices against 30,000 Black and Hispanic borrowers. Allegedly. So, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> and and they allegedly invest in private prisons. Um, and they allegedly tell the police foundations to take their picture and name off of the website so they don't get blacklash. So they allegedly doing all this stuff. So yeah. shout out to Wells allegedly. Fargo for allegedly and tell them the to free community. up Wendy Williams' money. That's a you really want you want to talk about appealing to the masses. They do to and Wendy they will give Wendy Williams her money. What did Wells Fargo yeah. do to, to, to dear Wendy? <laughs> they they got her under conservatorship. So she there was a clause in her contract and, and they were able to, if there was certain uh, red flags, then Wells Fargo 
would would assign a manager over Whitney Whitney Wendy Williams accounts. They and Britney so, Spears her. Yep. Yeah. Damn. Damn. And they won't give her our money. Now, now people are ready to take to the streets. Forget <laughs> scamming. So, forget discrimination. Forget police funding. Let the hood know money. they won't give Whitney Williams her money. How you doing? You know, how you do- <laughs> now? Now we ready to take to the streets. So, 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 Damn. So, that is so, cold, so, 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 so you mean to tell me it wasn't pushing black people into foreclosure it was the wendy williams thing that's that's what i'm that saying right? if we get that story out if we let it be known the oh. evils of wells fargo so forget we people lost their known. house yeah forget the people lost their house that's what the white boy should have mentioned in the story <laughs> yeah not, not all that black <laughs> wendy, not, how much of that billion, billion is they wendy williams money, money. and they won't <laughs> they got some way but people have death called in death threats and and have cased the home of the the manager that that uh, Wells Fargo serious? assigned to her account, and she told Wells Fargo, "Listen, I don't want to be the executor of her estate. I don't want to oversee her account because <laughs> I'm being harassed and my family's had to be moved. So people gonna take to the street." It was so Diallo, Charlie, Charlie, and his uh, Trojan horse TD Jakes, they mm-hmm. are bending the arc so that they can aim at helping Wells Fargo correct systematic yeah. inequality. So let's make yeah. sure that we lift up the brother Charlie and his Trojan horse uh, yeah. T.D. Jakes. And you know doing- he's not scamming because when they came to him with the billion dollar check a few years ago, he ripped it up and threw it in their faces and said, go get your house in order. And now they come back with the billion dollars and they've got new leadership. New they management. Are, new it. management. <laughs> <laughs> and now, man, these dudes, man, it hurts my heart. I ain't mad, even mad at him. I'm mad at the people. Like I said, I'm mad at at, at the ATL. And how that song I'm mad go? At the streets. That new management song. Y'all old heads, what? y'all know about it. What is it? What? Something I'm in love under new management. That's y'all don't know that song. Nah, That's R and B. I'm in love under R&B. new management or something like that. Oh man, I forgot y'all cat y'all some pseudo. Yeah, we don't do R and B. It's hip hop over here. The real <laughs> the real th- the real thug cast is from R and B anyway. So I don't know about um, that pseudo hip hop. Okay, yes, yes. So okay, good for y'all. Yeah, y'all y'all R and B thugs. Yeah, it, we're all very all afraid. Th- <laughs> all right, man. Hey, listen now. Why you think the thug rappers singing now? All the thug rappers singing because they know the hood cats. What thug rap? The face tap rappers? All the thug rappers. All the thug rappers singing now. They sing because they don't culture. have bars. They sing right. for lack of lyricism and it's auto tune singing. Hey, this go. But you, hey, go go do hey, your your hey, this guy. your fur collar silk so, pants thuggery. Ain't nobody so, trying to so, stop you, Geech. So basically, you're trying to basically you're trying to disrespectfully <laughs> seg. Listen, <laughs> look at it. You got the hand too. Hey, you trying to disrespectfully segue us into prize and Fuji's and shit like that? That's I wanted to, to talk about. Cause the they lawsuit. singing and rapping. <laughs> Cause now y'all messing with my money. I ain't TD Jakes. I ain't got it like that. I can't afford to have nobody hey. mess with me. I, you know. hey. I thought we was gonna talk about the lawsuit, but if y'all want to talk about Pros, my favorite Fuji. Oh, word. I'm, I'm yeah. I, I, I'm for the mm-hmm. underdog. Not the revolutionary Y Clef who was about to lead Haiti back to Des- uh, John Jock Desalina's era. I said what I said. Ghetto Super, my favorite. This and guy. if you go listen to the skits on the album, even though he didn't have the best bars, he was always had the, the funniest skits on the album. But yeah, probably well, my always, favorite Fuji. In the video, he used to hold up the wall. He ain't used to be doing that. Well, Geechee met Hoops. I once upon a time met Maya. So that's my oh. down there in the ATL. Okay. Um, did that three did, did that three times. Yeah. I wasn't. I was. I didn't I'm gonna know go ahead and get off time. air and let y'all do this because I, was ain't got it. It was <laughs> I can't join be- this fight. <laughs> no, no, it was before she was famous, and one of her early managers, I think, was or or something was in the nation, and I was down there visiting uh, my brother and and um, and sister it was. I think she was there at the time too, and their kids, and yeah. Maya was there as a as a young, very quiet. I would have never thought that she would have become who she became, you know. So it was interesting, you know. Anyway. So Diallo, Diallo should like her because she got Planet Nine, some vegan wine. You know what I mean? So I don't know why you hating on Maya because is it is bringing... it a red? Yeah, it's a red. Okay, 
Yeah, I'm a connoisseur yeah. of vegan wine. Ghetto superstar, that is what you are. Yeah. Get it. I just oh, had my first bottle of vegan wine myself, as a matter of fact. Not oh, Maya yeah? Rudolph. Not Maya Rudolph, Yipper. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to meet Maya Rudolph, though. She funny. I'd have a drink with Maya. She mad funny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um. Yeah, and I I had to get schooled on why there was the need to call it vegan wine. I didn't even know the whole process originally. Fish, you fish know. eyes and guts and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they, I didn't know all that. Yeah. Uh, so I thought they just stepped on grapes and poured it in a glass. No, put a fancy a, label on it. There's a vegan and organic too, because you know, um, some of the regulations for for your pesticides and the concentration of pesticides uh, are exempt for like uh, wine grapes. That they have for foods that will be consumed versus foods that will be processed into other things. So you also want to get vegan organic wine. Mm, mm. And yeah, it tastes yeah. different, it hit different, yeah. Or biodynamic vegan organic wine. Look at this. So yeah, I don't be out here on the corner taking it to the head. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I am a man of vegan, vegan organic. Of, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegan organic biodynamic. Y'all see, y'all uh, don't know. I'm into the finer things. That's it why y'all see me over in the white dynamic. neighborhoods. I live in the hood. <laughs> I, I consume over. Y'all see me. Oh, in the so you, Chicago. so you got, you got the the white people grocery stores in your hood. Huh? No, I don't. But I no, he just, there. he just, he just, he will bus and train himself to the white yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see me? I be running back from two fist and two bags of sacks, running from the white neighborhood back to to Bronzeville. Thank you, Adna, very much. Appreciate you. Nah, man. Uh, that's so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, what, what, what y'all, what y'all, what y'all think about the prize shit? Like, I after what after reading up on it, it made me go look at the um. Prize versus Wyclef for running for Haiti, Haiti, Haiti president, and how the Haitian president that prize back was into a bunch of fuck shit, right? But so, yeah, I, I just what y'all think about the the whole prize shit? So far? I honestly didn't. I thought about it as much of this. I thought as much about this as I thought about prize as a member of the Fugees. And... Y'all, who do you think formed the Fugees? Prize and Wyclef. Form- Prize and Wyclef. That's the prize. I'm, he even Wyclef will admit he introduced Lauren to Pra to to Wyclef. Uh, the 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 man who is responsible. He should for have the left Fuji. it at that. And it yeah. actually it wasn't originally the Fuji's. It was the translator crew. Yeah. He should have and, just left and, it and blunted that. on reality. It wouldn't be no Fuji's without Prize. And that's what that's the thanks he gets. So. Shout out. And he's got one of the hardest verses in the whole Fuji's pantheon. He's got a, the hardest verse. BDB, 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 bo. No. I rest my head on the pillow. <laughs> no, when he Listen, said sure, in bro. the beast, probable cause got flaws like dirty draws. Meet me at the corner store so we can start the street wars. That was one of the hardest lines. I don't care what oh, you yeah? said. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure J Ho, J Ho wrote that. So J Ho was bankrolling Prize to be his puppet right now. So I'm pretty sure J Ho wrote that. He probably bankrolled the Fugees and all that. Anyway, yeah. The best part about that <laughs> trial is he tried to subpoena Obama. <laughs> 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 he subpoena Obama to come hey, and testify on his. Hey, I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I'm Don't telling you, I'm trouble. telling you, I'm calling everybody. <laughs> yeah, hey, and listen, the judge shot I'm that shit you. down. <laughs> if y'all, if y'all, if y'all get the chance, you gotta go find Pimp Squad, Pimp Squad Clicks. That's T.I.O. Group. Their mm. skits. I'm telling you, man, the funniest skits in the world. When a man called this man, he said, "Hey, hey, Jerry, hey, come on down to the precinct, precinct, man. They got us." <laughs> he's like, "Come on, they got us, man." <laughs> <laughs> hey. God. hey he, he said, listen, I got kids. Y'all don't help me in this. Don't help me out. Like, I can do all this time by myself. Hey, that's just funny. Yo. <laughs> this nigga, so, yeah. Come on down to the precinct. Obama, come on down. They got us. They got hey, us. Hey, yeah. f- my first call is going to be, I'm going to be, the first thing I'm going to say in the, in the, in the precinct is, uh, uh, Geechee knows the Clintons. Call them, call Geechee and get Bill Clinton, subpoena Bill and Hillary. <laughs> and bring by the time by the time that happens, he'll be on a tropical island with hoops. <laughs> you know? 
hey, hey, in a place in a, in a in a in a country that doesn't have an extradition. extradition in, yeah, in a dark, TV, quiet room so. with no that soundproof. <laughs> right. So it would be eating, way too late. <laughs> eating bananas. I'm eating bananas all day on my right, hand. Exactly. Chill out. But, hey, listen. We're talking legal problems. No, but what Jay Z said. Hey, Jay Z said. Y'all Jay Z said, to "Get there, boy. I hear you." I'm outraged. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Jay Z said, "We don't resort the island. I mean, a problem violence. We don't resort an island. So I'm gonna be over there." Yeah. Why so, y'all getting in trouble? I stay out of the trouble, problem. man. Because I say allegedly so, before and during and after every statement. <laughs> So I mean, but again, what? So, what about China Gate and all this other stuff? You think that there's connection to uh, dealing with this 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 funder, J Ho? D- do you see or read or know any of the connections to that? Yeah, they basically charge dude with being an unregistered agent, but that's kind of like they can throw that on anything, anybody involved in the political process. And like I said, I didn't Obama even Obama know. Now, right. Right. He was like, I didn't yeah. know, what are you talking about, an unregistered agent? Because as a citizen, <laughs> you're allowed to engage the political process. And there are multinational corporations and wealthy individuals that are, are, are influencing the political process all over, state, local, national elections that are not registered. So, you know, they, they uh, basically accused him of being an unregistered lobbyist. That was ultimately the crime. And he's like, you know, some dude gave me some money to make some connections. I'm a celebrity, and that's that shit happens all the time. It's very selective prosecution. So this is what it is. This is it, it's all anti-soda because they're trying to create a situation mm-hmm. where we're only comfortable talking to black Americans. That's the only group you can right. talk to. That's the only black people can only talk to black Americans and avoid <laughs> the 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 unregistered agent, whatever, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. That's what they're trying to do. I see the hustle. I so, right. so but if I if I would feel sorry for Prize, because he seems like he has a long career now and of being used or fronted, like when him and his homeboy uh from Haiti, the I can't remember the present name, Mar- Martel or whatever. But in an interview, Praz was saying, like, that's my homeboy. I told him to run, I put him on. And he's like, Well, are you kind of like a Steve Bannon to Trump? No, nah, it's deeper than that. Like, so Praz is pretty much saying that he used this president to run the country, knowing damn well Clint, Clinton and some other people use prize probably. But so again, when I was looking at it, I was looking at sort of, um, I think it's the, it's, it's the party, uh, see at the uh, Kale uh, party, right? Prize homeboy is running that party. And then Moise is actually out of that party too. And prize homeboy is Moise political, dad or politically god dad so it's like and the the same guy who pros had was literally uh all in moise's uh cabinet putting people in place he actually put his security forces in place so there's a lot of like interesting things but pros positioned himself as like he's the guy kind of running puppeteering um the, the president right yeah and and it's it's very but he in terms of translating back to here, he's been an operative. He's been an agent. He's been an informant, you know, and they talk about how you, you see when 50 Cent went after him saying he was a rat. Who prize? Yeah. Yeah. He said yeah, he yeah. always knew he was a rat. And if you always knew he was a rat, why are you just not saying something? So don't that, isn't that but, rat by association? Because if you yeah, know, but, if you're in the streets and you know somebody's an operative, an agent, and you don't say anything until they get outed by the government, but you knew they were around and about doing the dirt and you don't out them. Doesn't that make you a rat by association? I, I mean, I but I think streets, if he's, man, I'm just, but I think is I think if he's a rat, right, which he is maybe, but what he's being charged for in the U S is what the U S government use him to do in Haiti. So right. he should be like, he should be, Screaming, he tried it like a mug right now. I followed the trial. He tried that. He tried all of that. He said, you know, the, the what I'm doing. That's where the whole agent thing came out. He says, I'm not doing nothing. Y'all let basically they gave that dude enough rope to ha- hang himself. Hang himself. He met with Obama. He was at Democratic convention. He was a Democratic mover and shaker and operative. 
And he was going to translate that into a, 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 a politic, doing international diplomacy unofficially. So he's out here doing this shit. And he didn't really try to hide it because he was like, this is what, I, like you said, I've been doing this in Haiti. I've been a mover and a shaker in politics. So I, I think he was genuinely blindsided when he was charged. And he didn't even try to hide anything. So everything was right there on the table. They had all the records. He was, they got the recordings. You know, and, and I don't know. I'm old school. So even, even when I got my first job working at Rally Burgers, my grandma told me, don't get up there thinking you can do what the white boys do now. <laughs> you know, my fast food, when didn't they tell black people, when you get up there, don't think you can do just because you got the title. Just because you got the position, don't get up there thinking you could do what the white boy's doing because, you know, the rules are different for you. Even up there at the highest level or the lowest level. Don't walk into McDonald's taking whole sleeves of frozen <laughs> patties out of there, even if you see the white boys doing it. No, tell you, no way. We forgetting the most basic black lessons. <laughs> I so, so, <laughs> so I've been, I've been reading, I've been reading this book as a uh, crude Crude intentions, how oil corporations uh, contaminates the world, and in the book, the author was talking about like the prize situation, and so I think he go into like much detail about it. Um, and he talked about it, like in 20, 2012, according to Right and Hope J Ho Lo, which which prize when they put up ghost accounts, they started calling him Wu Tang. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's but anyway, up. the internet that is, is rough. Up. Boy, that's fucked up. Hey, man, I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, like in 20, 2012, according to Wright and Hope, J Ho Lo transferred 20 million to two companies owned by Prize. The singer then used the money to uh, make a 1.2 million payment to a super PAC, Black Men Vote, which supported Obama campaign. That's why he would, that's why he called, you know, uh, what's one of the rappers say he got Obama on the text? That was Jay Z. So Prize thought he was Jay Z, and that's what, and that's why he called Obama. Said, "Come on, help me in, Obama. You on mute? You on mute? Mute Diallo? Because the Fugees, nobody associates Fugees with gangsterism and thuggery. But I mean, y'all, because they're like, oh, two out of three of the Fuji members doing Fed time. They're not even doing like state, <laughs> like local. They doing Fed time." But y'all forget about John Forte. Oh, right. The big cocaine bust. And he was pardoned by George W. Bush. What is going on with the Fugees? I mean, I might have to join ADOS because these refugees coming here <laughs> doing some thuggery. I mean, they surpassing us. They they display, they're not displacing us in jobs, they displacing us in thuggery. Because John Forte. Oh, Got a mandatory minimum. That old school, we don't even hear about that shit. Remember with the uh, Clinton crime bill? Mm -hmm. He got a mandatory minimum of, of, of what, 20 years? And George W. Bush commuted his sentence? So the Fugees, and you know, Lauren went in, did fed time, and now this dude. So I mean, what, what other rap group got them type, and their affiliates got them type of credentials? You know, when when these other Rico cases, it's mostly local nickel and dime shit. These are international players, international with criminals. Yeah, wow. I don't. So yeah, damn, I think the does. Fugees don't get enough enough props. It's like MC Hammer. Remember his street cred? I mean, we Hammer. out here looking. <laughs> Hammer was that dude, man. Remember he had a hit out on MC Search and shit. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ha hammer, <laughs> hammer harder than Tupac. He ha he harder than Tupac. Hammer, hammer. That I, yeah, believe, so I didn't know about the search <laughs> part though. I know he stepped to Ice Cube and then, but at some show or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, remember they point. came out with that gas face and they had that. Giant I remember that foam hammer with the glasses on it. He put a he put uh, 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 targets on all. He put a price on all their heads. I never heard that part. Mm -hmm. I thought I do know. I do remember that they thought he was the safe black rapper that they could add no. in there. When they yeah, were so it might be life. something to this, because I mean, Fuji's and Hammers are like one step down from R and B, so it might be something to Geechee y'all's R and B thuggery, R and B 
Listen, I'm uh, trying uh, to tell you. So I want to right now apologize I'm trying to, tell to the R&B community for my earlier comments in the same show. Because now that I listen, think about listen, it. Listen, so. listen. Do y'all not remember when Ghostface Killer said he had a shootout with the Delphonics? Y'all ain't heard that? Yeah. <laughs> what? So the Delphonics, the, he, <laughs> he had a shootout with the them, them cats busting. I'm telling you, I don't know what y'all been through. But the RB let, me, let me tell you something. How is it You're that the, the only one I'm scoping at this morning? <laughs> See? Look at that. Listen, it's real. Let listen, me, hey. hey, mama, mama biscuits need to come out with a with an R and B joint and, and and tell her how y'all run the streets, man. Real that talk. And 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 how the Fuji's got more convictions than the NWA than the ghetto boys. <laughs> Ice Cube don't even have a traffic <laughs> infraction on his record. They, I mean, Ice, Ice Cube doesn't even have a traffic infraction. Murder Ice Incorporated, Cube. Murder Incorporated, ain't even killed a mouse with a glue uh, glue trap. What? What's well, I mean, going slick, on? I mean, y'all no, 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 oh, do got oh, slick Rick. He was he was about to be, he remember. was about to be deported. He was about to be yeah. deported. So we we got the, the like, that's the Diablo yeah, he's point. A, all these African <laughs> immigrants coming over here stealing our gangster. <laughs> right. They over here thugging for real. Like, damn. Leave something that for is, us. Man. They taking our thugger. So, hey, yeah. so, so I think also I did at this point, up to this point, Fuji's is the most thugged out criminal rap group. Hands down. They 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 taking taxes, snatching taxes out of Uncle Sam, mouth, trafficking keys. Now I'm just waiting on what Wyclef gonna do because you know it's a co internal competition. So Wyclef, now it's your turn. I told you Step Wyclef up. was a he was a yeah he was in Haiti. He, he was gonna win. He was gonna win. He was hating on that man. He was he was a revolutionary man. <laughs> he the singer. He the only singer. No, I'm joking. I mean, no, but, he uh, messing with career uh, Shakira. He got he got Latin and Central American connects. Oh, oh but did really? you hear? Did you hear? Uh, it became an anthem in this house for a minute. I was a little worried for a second. Did you hear Shakira's bars against her ex man, PK, who 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 dumped her for some young, younger fatty? And she no. did a whole I think she did a she it can't, it has a remix now, too. A whole track. She was basically she just went at her. She just it was it was just fire. A whole little Shakira song about about this little this little. Uh, um, what did she call her? Like a little, she said something like something to the effect, I'm a sports car, you a little, you know, I don't yeah. know, something hanging around the Fuji's too much. I see? mean, I'm saying, you gotta be careful. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Oh, I, I mean, I mean to have Emma take a shot at you, my bad. Though, my Emma bad. stays <laughs> taking shots. I, I, you know, it's not. <laughs> It's not. It's not a morning if I don't get a morning shot from you know. You know, what I'm saying thank you, Emma. It's always good to hear from hey. Emma. <laughs> So, so also along uh, with Prize, J, J Ho, J Ho was bankrolling another worker who was in the DOJ. So J Ho was almost, you know, he had himself covered. He, um, obviously, he was trying to like, um, I guess throw monies and dollars at all of the celebrities. So they were strippers, and he was just throwing money at them. But Prize was his running back. So yeah. now you all sound like my daughters, telling me not to say to <laughs> not to use the slang when they hear me use the latest slang. Oh well, like, use our word for it, skeezer. Call her a skeezer. Ske <laughs> that's, what? That's our word. She's a tramp. A what? A yeah. tramp. Tramp. That's what we tramp. call them. That was that word. That word. That word. Era thoughts were called skeezers. That wasn't nineties. That was that's seventies. That's well, it was, that's that was nineties. No, look up skeezer pleaser. In UTFO mm. did a whole album. <laughs> Called Skeezer Pleaser. Well, oh, okay. when in Charleston, we said Jokey. <laughs> Them boy Jokey. Yeah, that's a bit too All right. obscure. <laughs> what else we got? It's already 10 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, everybody, if you can come back, Tonda Seasway Chimaranga is joining me for a discussion. She, she's going to join the discussion around Dear Mama. And and a Faini Shakur. I, 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 was, I was leaning too much on the E. I, and got a, and got Damn. a tech correction. It's a Faini Shakur, and I apologize yes. for that. So, so Damn. the whole world oh, is yeah. saying it wrong. Hey, you know, a Faini. Well, I, I guess we're not going to spelling in the text. We're not going to get to. I guess uh, irritated genie got Jared shook. 
So no, I'm. It's, he's been so, avoiding getting to that topic. So I'm not avoiding anything. I'll Come on, Diallo. He shook. Hey, he, hey, he shook. Here, here we go. So, so this is go this is Diallo. this is this is. I'm gonna share a portion of the email that we got. This is this is it here. Um, the other night, this is directed to Jared Ball for a broadcast you did with two co-hosts on the Black Power Media YouTube page on May. Uh, March, what was it? March? I can't now. I can't see my own screen. Diallo. On uh, April 24th, 2023, the link is below. It was stated on this show uh, that my ex wife, uh, that my ex wife accused me of physically abusing her. This is patently false. Uh, this is a patently false accusation, and she specifically stated that I never put my hands on her. The videos where she stated this are still available on YouTube. The repeated statements falsely accusing her of blaming me for physical abuse and accusing me of physical abuse are slanderous uh, and meet the definition of defamation in the state of Maryland. I have been legally advised to provide you notice, hold on, uh, to one, publicly retract the false statements made on your program that I was accused by my ex-wife of physically abusing her and that I have ever, ever physically abused her. Remove all statements from the broadcast accusing me of physical abuse of my ex-wife. Please take immediate action in regard to this request and let me know when it has been done. If no action is taken by Thursday, April 27th, my attorneys will be contacting you directly. And then he signed it. I just don't want to show because he, he has his phone number there. I don't want to put his phone number there. Um, so... That was it. So I immediately responded. Uh, not immediately. I should say. Um, uh, sorry about that. I meet, I responded shortly thereafter. And uh, after removing the um, video and just told him, I said, good evening. And the video's down. And, you know, that was it. So I actually, so, so initially, let me just say this. Initially, I think that he has every right to do that. I think because we didn't have any evidence and <laughs> claims were made um, um, that he's, he has a right to do that. The problem for me, and I see you, I see you've already put the, the link in the chat. The problem for me is that that when he said that line about the videos are still there, uh, I wanted to find them and I found them and I watched all eight episodes and listened to every second of that and, and what they are. And we can add Rough. the link to the show description is eight episodes of his ex-wife and some of her, her sisters. And, and I think a couple uh, later on, a brother joins a pro like uh, laying out her experience um, and what is said in that email, according to her, is false. So, so he, what she says very clearly, what she says very clearly is that the physical extent of the of of what she ends calling domestic abuse, the physical extent of it, was one heavy push, uh. and standing in front of her with his fist, blocking her up against the wall. And she says, only because the spirits, the ancestors sent her their son to interrupt with needing a, in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom twice, did, did that withdraw the energy enough to stop him from actually physically, she was confident he was gonna beat her. Um, but that's just the physical part of it. The eight hour plus series is, so, so when we brought this up last week, just to be clear, my initial intent was because I, I don't I don't know this dude very well. I don't know this this particular community of the straight black pride community in 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 the DMV and and beyond. But my initial intent was we're gonna have a little bit of fun about what happened at the Baltimore convention. I did not know about any of this. I did not know Diallo, you were going to bring it up, and I and I am not saying you are wrong, at all. I'm just saying I wasn't ready for it. So we had our discussion as it went. So when he sent that email, my initial reaction was I had I didn't know he has every right to do that. We don't have to agree. We're not be on the same page. I don't want to get into it. He has every right to say you got to have evidence if you're going to put this out like that. 
but again, the problem is now there's 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 more evidence. She there's so much evidence, so many receipts that she points out the saying not even liking the word, so many court cases, so many hearings, so many. And then worse for me, and then I'll stop here, is that I'm listening to this, and I'm clear, like, and I and I want to say it this way because I can't I can't help it. I want to say it this way. I I don't know her, but I know she would not like me. Like personally, I know she would be like, like I'm the I'm part of the problem. I'm the I'm I'm I come out of the cave beast, the the cave Becky, and she was calling, calling his lawyer at one point. I get it, but I was profoundly moved and and troubled by this story that this sister is going through all of this, suffering the way she suffered, and that she makes appeals as she says, as you pointed out, Diallo. To be fair to you. She makes appeals to the elders and gets nothing. So beyond the silliness about what I was looking to have fun with last week, beyond the silliness of just this whatever in general, I feel horrible for her experience and that of her children. I feel horrible for, for even the part of the African community that don't want me in it. I feel horrible that this is, that this is going on and I, and, 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 I don't know. So I, I don't want, I, I don't want like, so my whole thing at this point is so many things need to happen beyond anything between us and this and all that here. And I don't want, right. and just, I'm like, man, this dude, I, I don't want. So anyway, right. I, I just. So, so, so slight, just, real quick. Ahead, so slight, ahead. so slightly like she did get a response from the mom and the Baba initially when she called them, they talked. Then they were supposed to follow up with some stuff. They didn't follow up, but then she followed up and they said something is still coming, but then there was no communication. But, 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 but before you go, Diallo, I do want to add this nuance question, right? So given that she is a hella straight black pride advocate still, despite him, and given that she will have a type of energy towards radical critical thinkers, some people that might affect their empathy for her. But we talked about this a little bit in the chat, but what, what are your thoughts around this Listen, idea let me say this real quick. quick. But, I didn't get a chance to highlight this with him on air because we kept getting... Daruba said something to, to us the other day in talking about that Dear Mama documentary. And he said something in the context of that conversation, people should go check it if they haven't seen it, where he said, Huey Newton tried to have me killed, but he was on the right side of history. And we have to understand that when we put him in the context of this struggle, it's in that vein that I feel this, is how I feel about it. Like, I get it. I get it. I, we're not on the same, t like, we're not cool. <laughs> she really wouldn't like, we would not have nothing to do with each other, but, but for me, it's bigger than that. And I, and I, and I, and I do, I can't help but feeling like this, I, the, 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 the battle that, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know. I don't know. I've, I've never been tested in this way. I don't know. Like, if, if she was a white woman and a white supremacist and, a, and, a, and like, a, you know, and a, a colonial Nazi, whatever, would I still feel the same way if she was had a similar story? I don't know if it would go that far. But in this context, within the African community, from my worldview, from my back, from my point of view, I can't, I can't hear that and be thinking about her particular politics. All I could think about is this is a woman trying to survive with her children and and whatever is wrong about her worldview, she doesn't deserve that. Right. And that. No. Which, um, which and la last thing. So so and I know you might have a different, but this is something that Coco and Ricky was talking about on their on the show the other mm -hmm. day when they talk about in Nicaragua. When I brought up some more of Michelle, it has a video of him literally talking to the people who was with the counter revolutionary group. So I, I guess that that's why I wanted to frame the question. But Diallo, I think you have a different. Thought. Well, first of all, we do have to acknowledge, and I think it's necessary to acknowledge that uh, Irritated Jeannie's wife was the number one cheerleader for Irritated Jeannie. She, in the video, proudly takes credit for setting up 
conferences, helping him get his name and his message out. And she takes credit for being a major part in, in uh, the construction of the Black Straight Pride movement and advancing their mission, which she still holds to. And it only became a problem when the abuse and violence that he projected out to the larger community followed him home. That's the only time. So she's not pro victims advocate. She's not pro. It's only uh, it's about her personal plight, not about the overall struggle or the over because she do, is a, 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 a reactionary conservative in her ideology and views and values to this day. And I don't think the, this abuse has radicalized or enlightened her in the least bit. So she is a victim, maybe even not a sympathetic victim. But I've always been in the position that I'm not a fan of this whole sympathetic victim, whether it's someone attacked by the police or a victim of a police atrocity or were they on the on a row and college student. I don't care about the pedigree of the victim. Victims, when, when we have a victim, the target needs to be the perpetrator. The target needs to be the abuser. So if we're going to talk about a victim, so but I also understand that victims can also become vectors, meaning that instead of trying to heal from their trauma, they often go and spread and impose uh, uh, victimization on others as a way of maladaption, of a way of mal coping with their own victimization. But saying all that, what disgusts me the most about this is irritated genie. From my point of view, in my opinion, have to talk legalese now because he run into the feds snitching in my opinion, is one of the most prolific, broad-based, baseless accuser. Remember, before straight black pride and all that, they had the black decency movement. This is more than 20 years ago. And the black decency movement's whole mission was to bring back high moral standards and values to the community. And the way they did this was they would go get dirt on anybody they thought were doing wrong and put it out to everyone. Irritated Genie would post videos of young girls twerking, underage girls engaged in twerking and things of that nature. And he'd play the videos and condemn them and say, because young black girls were twerking is the reason why we have death, poverty, and dysfunction in the community. He also accused people like uh, uh, Kitty Obiawadu because Kitty Obiawadu was defending some traditions in Africa that uh, irritated genie was condemning, saying they were homosexual or that they were a feminine and, and they were not, didn't hold up to his standard of what an African could be. So he tried to condemn certain rituals and festivals and practices in Africa. And um, um, Chidi, who platformed and, and helped irritated genie get the word out early in the LIB radio days, said, no, I think this is appropriate. These are pre-colonial pre practices that have nothing to do with sex or Western values. These are uh, indigenous African uh, practices. And he went up on a campaign to say that Kitty Owadu didn't just support homosexuality and pedophilia, but to suggest that he too himself engaged in it. The, when he lost his job working for the, 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 the federal government, uh, the NSA, he was talking, on tape. You talking about? Huh? You talking about Homeland Security? Homeland Security. Sorry, whatever. <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah, when he was working for Homeland Security, keeping the homeland secure, the fatherland, the Reich secure, uh, he was on tape saying Obama's a faggot, screaming at the top of his lungs that Obama's a faggot. Where's the evidence for that? So it's just crazy to me that if you notice something about, it's not just white evangelicals. It's not just the white conservatives, but all of these people of this authoritarian reactionary mind state love to dish it, but they can't take it. It's just uh, the human embodiment of hypocrisy. Because I've followed uh, Irritated Genie throughout his career and I've seen him level some of the most horrible accusations against anyone for the slightest difference in position or outlook. But the moment someone misphrases instead of saying he's a psychological abuser he's an emotional abuser that he's allegedly stalked his wife and had his followers stalk his wife according to her own words i just throw the term wife beater 
And he wants to nitpick saying the way you accuse me of abusing my wife is not specifically to the letter how I abuse my wife. And to me, that is just whack as hell and it's hypocritical as hell that he want to get litigious. So please don't send that white, blonde haired white woman after me that you that you walked into court with that you sent. Don't send your blonde haired, blue eyed, Becky. white, white cave dwelling, caucus mountain devil lawyers after us, irritated. Cause I know you are gonna watch this. You know, and yes, I did call him. I don't know. He said he wanted a for formal apology. I'm here to formally apologize for calling him the irritated bowel syndrome genie. <laughs> that is not his name. He is the irritated genie of solo beast. But the way he walks around like he's got something stuck up there. Oh, I'm sorry. In my opinion, from my point of view, in my baseless opinion, the dude act like he's got some type of internal irritant in problems. The way he lashes out of everybody else, man. Just get some therapy. Get some help. Talk to somebody. Yeah. Besides so, those fake ass ancestors and elders where y'all playing Af Afrocentric cosplay, y'all acting like evangelical, reactionary, conservative, uh, uh, puritanical Christians, but dressing yes. up like Africans and taking on African historical names. Instead of cosplaying, go talk to an actual therapist. It's my recommendation, my humble suggestion. So quick, quickly speaking of these people's irrational fear um, and speaking of their like wild claims, after that video that me, you and Asafo did about, um, I, I, don't, I don't remember the title, but it was something about demagogues in the, in the African Center community. We was accused of, you know, shitting on Baba Baruti. Um, I had an elder call me and said, you know what, I, I agree with, 95% of what you said, but I just don't like that y'all talked about Baba Baruti. I was like, we didn't talk about him. Diallo just critiqued a part of his book. But then there was another brother who also wrote a book who was also connected to the genie who said that, like, so pretty much me and um, Asafa was saying that, like, yo, what y'all doing is basically so stochastic terrorism by your sycophants coming to kind of harm these people. So what's the end game? What, what's going to happen? And he was like, well, the answer's in my book. And I don't know if y'all read that chapter, but I read that chapter and I sent it to y'all. But that chapter is the type of shit that they be standing on. Like, and it's like hard, like, again, like I said in the last. I don't, the, you sent us a book chapter? I sent it in the, like, I sent it in the chat. I was like, yo, I don't ask y'all to do much, but please read this. I was trying to give y'all a, a warning oh, of like. man, I didn't even see that. So I definitely didn't read it. But it's, what, it's only, oh. it's only four, it's only four pages. It's, it's oh, the, I saw that. Yeah, it's only four pages, but I don't know. If I you couldn't read it. it. You took pictures of the book. It was illegible yeah. to me. <laughs> well, well, it's a, it's a PDF and somebody sent me a picture, four pages of the book of that chapter. So if you if you can go through the PDFs, you can see it. But I sent it to a couple of people. But in that book, like other than like misspell words and run on sentences for three days, and like like he just making wild ass claims of like, and and it sounds like a, a barbershop talk of drunk two drunk cats, like a drunk cat just arguing at a barbershop. That's what the book. That's how the book reads. But like this is some of the this. Things, um, there's a I can't remember. I think it's like uh. Um, um, Kilimanjaro. No, that's not Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Don't do that. You talking about the African K through twelve African Science Culture Schools book? That no, you this to? is another. Book. Oh, see, can you, Geechee, Can Hold you do on. this? Can you just resend whatever you sent in this in the private chat now, so we can get on it? Because I'm yeah, not yeah, clear yeah. what I, I, I'm not clear what we're talking about at this point. Let's see, I'm, I'm confused. That's the book I got from Kilimanjaro that I didn't read, but that's those. Wait, are the which book you got from? Which book you got from Kilimanjaro? But I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it again. Man, this boy be in my DMs. This... <laughs> Let me see. I got a lot from you. I gotta scroll. <laughs> I'm getting confused. You got me calling first, names that first, I got no first business of, calling. First of all, you got a lot of DMs because you told me at one point I gotta send you the link to the show every day I'm on it, or unless you ain't gonna come. So that's why. <laughs> this boy be in my DMs, sending me too much stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. I see it. This is it. Okay. I don't Man, see anything. So, I got so, it. Pull Check, it up, your Check your DMs. Check your DMs. That's why he said, "Dim boy, dim boy, be in my DMs." I'm, I'm, I'm in the WhatsApp chat. 
You all got another <laughs> one going? I don't have. I'm, maybe you all got something separate. I'm, I'm not a, a part of. No, in your in our chat, man. What are you talking about, man? I didn't, Yipper. I didn't. I, because Yipper, you to be honest with you, this this week, I'll be honest with you. Outside of like work and other stuff, I spent so much time on that eight eight plus hours of those videos. And I'm not. I'm not trying to make. I mean, it was. It was. It was a lot, it was, man. It was a it's lot. It's a lot. Emotional it, it, too. It, it's tr it was traumatic. It's it's just it was a lot to deal with. It's it's just so. And I do want to say, like I like. I do think it is an unfair representation of African centeredness, and I think that there are problems like similar to this outside of the African centered community, and and I and I really struggle with the whole what is to be done and how is this to be addressed? What is the plan? Um, because what what it's what she's reporting to have gone through, how, how, how could anyone who has ever said that they cared about her or her community not done anything about this, not addressed oh, this? What do you mean not done anything? They embarked on a harassment campaign. You'll notice on those videos, Against she had her. to turn off, right. They had to turn off the comments. So she has endured, and she said the only reason she made the tapes was because of the harassment. She I, was that's willing what I'm, right, to that's, let this dude right. front like the champion for black people that he pretends to be, allegedly, uh, as I suspect in my personal opinion. Uh, he pretends. So she said, I had to come out with these videos because they wouldn't leave me to blood cut alone. I was going to be quiet. I was going to fade into the background. But people were attacking her. And people get mad for you calling out our elders and calling out our leaders, and they don't ever address the offense that you're pointing to. I call out, yeah, you know, I'd be naming names. I don't know no better. You know, I'm from Missouri. <laughs> Missouri is the show me state. <laughs> and I, I, that's just how I came up, right? So, and, and in Missouri, we got this thing called Jeffing. And that's giving accolades and praise to somebody that's unworthy. And that's something we just don't do. If you get caught out for Jeffing, it's one of the greatest insults you can have. So just blame my upbringing, you know. So when you call these people out, when I call out cult leaders and demagogues, people never speak to the accusation. They never say, well, no, he's not a cult leader. No, he's not an abuser. No, he's not a charlatan. They always speak to the fact that how dare you say anything? How dare you say anything? So a lot, and like I said in much earlier shows, this whole no snitch culture and not airing out our dirty laundry, things that we developed in our culture in order to protect the collective have now been co-opted and captured in order to, to perpetuate abuse and perpetuate exploitation. That's why you can't just lock in on culture. Culture is there to serve the people. The people are not there to serve their culture. So if you have something that is an element of your culture, code of silence, not air and dirty laundry, don't snitch, don't tell, respect the elders. If you have something in your culture that has been infiltrated, corrupted, or been, begin to harm you instead of advance you, you have every right to dissect it criticizes, transform it, or expel it. So yeah, I, I think one of the solutions is to know that this stuff needs to be echoed. Just like you're willing to hear a, a revolutionary say something you agree with and spread their own message, honor them on, 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 on sacred days and birthdays and pour libations to them. When they fuck up, it needs to be that same echo chamber, that same platforming of the fuck ups as we do as we which, praise which, for their accomplishments. I, I, but I think that's the thing. So like we didn't, you know, obviously there's, there's no, no way to get into my whole life story the whole way. But I think there come there came a point in my life where I actually got, I don't know if I got isolated out of the conscious community or pushed out of the conscious community. But when we had our study groups, we study these books. We read them. We brought we brought Baruti to the space. We brought Olubatunji, not Olu, yeah, Olubatunji and... Um, Kilimanjaro, we brought these people to the stage space studying their book and they loved us. They praised us. They say all these other things. But when it's time for like, like elders are on beyond reproach, when that, when we say like, I don't know about that, all of a sudden we become traitors and agents and all this other shit because you're critiquing their work now. And so it's right. like, but, and, and that's, that's, but, but that's literally why after the video and he started like this dude started sharing stuff about me and Asafo and you. 
and people in the con conscious community was ragging us like, oh my gosh, they're yeah. LGB. Oh, look at them laughing. They might like each other. And I was like, yo, so what's the solution? <laughs> I said, I said, what's the solution? He's like, oh. I got it in my book. <laughs> so I took my time to read his chapter. And again, I sent it to y'all now, but that chapter is poor. Where is it? Whoa, whoa, Bruh. I got it. I found it. Hey, you said somebody and, and I, called us I, some I, names and made fun. They, hey, they called Jared, us, you said so that, that irritated what genie put his lawyer's number in the in the email. Can you resend that? I'm gonna <laughs> be some money. I I get some so, money for this. So just that dude that called so me Bugs Life. I'm a Suzuki. Uh, you call me Bugs Life on the show. No, no, sure. I just remind you he called you Bugs Life. Okay, yeah, okay. Then I'll use you as a witness. I'm a subpoena. Yeah, I I'm need a that Caucus Mountain cave dwelling devil lawyer <laughs> so, that listen. irritated Jenny uses because I'm be suing too. Because if you can sue somebody for, for name calling and, so, and Jared, playing the dozens, it. we gotta meet this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I sent it in the chat again, but I got it pulled up too, so I can share my screen and pull it if you want me. Okay, but it's not in the chat. I'm looking at the chat. There is nothing. Bro. You haven't sent anything to the group chat since 8 o'clock this morning. It's here. I'm looking at it. The oh. African-centered response to LGBTQAI organizations. That's yeah, it, right? Talking, yeah, you always talking about my And wait, Whoa, whoa. What they got against the A? A is for asexual. No, wait, wait, till, you wait till you read what he think A is. <laughs> but you, if you he, look at what you no, said, no, no, no. you'll see... Uh -huh. Are you putting it on the screen I, or not? I I'll don't have nothing. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I can't. But listen, uh, you gotta you gotta read what he think the A means because this is a researcher. He researched this really well and he wrote about it. So hold on, let me. I, I I'll share my screen, Diallo. If you can't, it looks better on my uh, computer screen. I couldn't read it on my phone. I can. I can oh, yeah, actually yeah. make it out now. Well, do you want to share your screen then? Uh, let me see. Uh, share screen. Uh, here we, uh, if you if you technical technical, I mean this this nerd shit, this slow. punk ass nerd shit. I don't I can do, do this, it. man. That's y'all. That's you and that's you and I, uh, I'll I'll just, I'll just do whoop, it. There it is. You want to be? I just did it. Be, you got to zoom in too, Diallo. <laughs> oh man, you be asking too much. I mean, the people can't see uh, it. I'm a G, man. I don't do this punk ass computer shit. And go to the first page so we can start at the first page. I only, I only, I only could take four pages. Eyes, and who book is this? So this is um, I think his last, I think his name, I don't know if his name is Mamalimu Olatunji, but I think his last name is Olatunji. So him, him and Genie, they, I don't know if he's a leader in the straight pride, black pride movement, but this is a book that he wrote. And I, like I said, I'm not trying to make fun of the dude right now, but what I'm saying is, if you tell me you got the answers, Sway, I'm gonna read your answers. And if your answers don't make sense, I'm gonna ask you about your answers. So I, <laughs> oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. So so I actually read it. I, re I I read what he said is the answers. And this first page is a little wavy because so you know you know Dennis right? Saw Dennis and Saw Winkler. In I Baltimore. know Dennis. Mm -hmm. So well, I mean, we've was, met. I don't know. Him. Yeah, yeah. I, I well, so, so he was accusing Dennis of like, oh, he looked at my book, he walked away, and he didn't purchase my book, and he didn't support me. And Dennis was like, yo, he 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 signed my book. And so Dennis showed me he signed the book, and Dennis ended up sending me this. So that's why the first one looked a little wavy. But again, looking past the bottom, he says, how do we minimize their plans from becoming a reality for us and our gaudron? He meant children. So there's going to be a lot of typos in this finished book that, that again, I did my best to look and pass. There's a lot of run-on sentences and, like, shit that don't even make sense and some wild claims. But I really just try to get through to see what the hell he was talking about. Um, but so so there's a point where he says something about A, but then he says, hold on, slow down, Diallo. Go back. Sorry. On. Starting off, what we, what we know is the fact that we all – come from families where there are a black man and a black woman who come together to create us. The fact is, we know that you need a black woman and a black man to create a black child. There is no way around this natural fact. So you, just that even first statement, you can see how the book is going to go. And then, so I, I read the book and I know Diallo, you said if somebody can lay out something and prove to you the sense of LGBTQ hate or straight black pride, you would join the movement. Well, this book I, didn't do it for me. I like that's what I said. I could say if they can demonstrate to me how how the LGBTQ AI is a, a uh, what do you say existential threat to the 
to the African world community, then I will join Straight Black Pride. And the response I got from Straight Black Pride was they blocked me from their socials and said that I was a homosexual. And when I hire yeah. irritated genies, cave dwelling, Caucasus Mountain, <laughs> Caucasian lawyer, I'm suing them too, because I didn't know all this stuff is actionable. Right. I mean, I'm gonna call my Morris homie and get his Black's Law Dictionary, and I'm about to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so in any, anyway, like we don't have to read. Like I can send it to somebody if they want to read it and laugh or whatever. But, but the point is, like, one can't say that I didn't go to the sources that you say you have and look at it. And Wait, quite, go ahead. But I just want to restate from my point of view for today. My issue is not their position on LGBTQ. My issue is in general, my primary issue is in general, the, the, what appears to be what, what his ex-wife alleges in those eight plus hours of, of audio is a level of escalation of threats, violence, hostility, and the absence of a response of, 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 a, of a response from the community that's meant to heal, address, solve, and protect. Because to your point, Diallo, as she says repeatedly, all she got was all the smoke from her community. And when Coco was in the chat, I think Coco was asking Diallo, what is your actual problem with Walimu Baruti? My answer to that, to, to intercept the question before I stop talking, is 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 only in what would only be in what I heard this sister say she reported that when she appealed to him, this is the man who 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 with his wife Mary performed the marriage ceremony to Jeannie and his ex. So someone she revered, as she says, more than my own biological parents because of the consciousness of the community and Baruti's consciousness, that when he shunned her or went quiet, it, that's what I'm, I'm like, that's for me the bigger concern. Like I'm not, I don't even, at, right now, I don't even care what they have to say about that, what, about what, the, the cave dwellers, about the, 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 the mix, whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm just like, that, that, that was so, disturbing to me that which, which, and no. i know it goes beyond just this incident and just this particular wing of the african community and just this particular political sector and it's like it's crazy man and that's I, and i don't know i honestly don't know what to do i don't, I don't know what to do and so, i don't i don't like what happened so, there at all or what is alleged no. by this sister to have happened at all so i understand that and i think what's happening is us because we got to the topic of him coming in to fight, stand on the front lines of the, uh, uh, against the LGBTQIA agenda, right? That's what his, that's why he was there. So in making this deal, all we're going to be accused of is also preventing him from standing on the truth. When I'm just clarifying, like we can go to your work and the work that you depend on, and we can talk about that. if that's what you're going to go to as it, as it pertains to Baba Baruti, like there's, things that obviously that I came up reading and studying and liking, but then there's things I question. Like I question the whole idea of elders are beyond reproach. So I read his whole thick book to educated people. And there's some things about buying power and all, all type of stuff, conspicuous consumption. But Diallo, he can tell you what he said about the Sophil book when I think he made a claim of the book said something about feminization of black male, we become gay and then we can't fight or something like that. But that I, I, I don't I, I don't I don't think I don't think it was a problem with Bill Rudy. I know Coco asked that question. It's not a problem with Bill Rudy, and I think that's what we get conflated at. It's dealing with the work. So if you put out the work, if you put out talk about the words, we're not talking about your person, your family, who you are, whatever. We're talking about the work. Now, the I mean Jared's problem could be a speculation about the character of Baruti based off of what the woman said. But I don't, I haven't heard what Baruti said and how he engaged with the woman. I can only anticipate that, like she said, after the situation, he went on this little speaking event with Baruti. So, I mean, I, I don't know, Diallo, if you got something different. Well, I actually have nothing against Baruti personally. 
I have some issues with his analysis and the conclusions that he reached and some of the solutions that he offers up to the community based on his conclusions. But, but I, it started getting kind of reckless when I started trying to articulate my issues with his analysis and conclusions. People started, you know, calling me out my name. So, you know, me being the, the, the stoic, you know, hard line, straightforward brother that I am, you call me out my name, I'm going to call you out your name back. You know, that's this is only the most appropriate and constructive way to conduct oneself as a mature adult. So I and to be honest, I like I said, my issues with, with Baruti are academic and uh and and ideological. It's not personal. I don't know to do personally. And uh if if uh I had an opportunity to meet him, I would prefer to discuss it in a civil manner. But again, I don't read even that. Let me not lie, because I can't even con discuss shit in civil manner, because like I said, there are real world consequences to what these people articulate and advocate. There are people being doing the same right? being there are families being ripped apart. There are people being thrown out of their homes and shunned from their families based on the ideologies and, and what these individual straight black pride advocates. And so when you um, designate an entire population of the black community as being an existential threat to our survival and a predatory uh, presence within our community. And a lot of these people act on that because if I truly believe that, like I told them, if what they said held up, if there was any type of support or evidence for what they said since, since uh, irritated genie is talking about, oh, you need evidence. If there was evidence, I'd be against them too. If this was 1998, I'd be a full-fledged member of straight black pride. You know, I'd be full on so, so by yeah, they, in a body boy. They, it. I they, would be with all of that. They, so <laughs> they want you to get to the analysis, the, the one that you disagree with. So, like, so um, give the point I just that, said that the, 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 the thing the overall view that they say that the gay community, gay individuals, LGBTQAI individuals are an ex their presence, their existence is an existential threat to black people, that they harm our ability to reproduce ourselves and they are a detriment to our ability to defend ourselves because the feminized men can't and won't fight and people who get into the queer gay agenda have no capacity or even interest in reproducing themselves and they also have ongoing insidious agenda to recruit recruit heterosexual cisgendered and straight men and women into their ranks in order to render them incapable of reproducing themselves and to dissolve their willingness and ability to take up arms to fight for black liberation or defend ourselves from white aggressors that is a very, very strong, talking about accusation. That's a much worse accusation than calling someone a wife beater, an individual a white beater, than condemning a whole community as an existential threat and a predatory presence. That's my issue. And if you're going to say something like that, because if it were true, like I said, if it were true, I would join the straight black pride movement and, and take those same positions. Hell, I was a member before straight black pride existed. I held those positions. You know, I believe that. I believe that the presence and prominence of gay and lesbian and, 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 and genderqueer people was a sign of the impending end times because that was my religious indoctrination. And it took me years so, to work I'm, through that. I'm so almost, that's my issue with him in a broad sense. But I could... So I'm almost... Uh, uh, pick apart the book that he wrote that I read to save my sons. I read that book because my sons, I wanted to save them from the agenda. <laughs> Jared over there, Jared over there in the chat beefing. But look. No, I'm finished. <laughs> I'm finished because, because, um, it, it, and my point is it, it's, it's, this is not, like this incident, this, what she lays out in those eight hours deserves to be heard and dealt with if in fact she is wrong in any portion of what she says it deserves to be heard and dealt with this is not some even even if i were to agree this is not some 
random passing by throwing out I'm accusing you of something. This is a woman who was married to this man for 10 years, had what, at least two children, I believe, with him and went to extensive went to extensive amounts of effort to both maintain the relationship and then to protect herself. So there's too much documentation. There's too much that she lays out that if she's just making it up, then we're talking about a level of pathology that I'm, I'm not even prepared to acknowledge, to be honest with you. Like that would just be, you've, you've gone like out, out worldly uh, uh, pathology if she created this whole thing. I, I mean, I appreciate you, I, uh, Sherry, if I'm saying Miss Jones, but I, my, I, I don't mean to say like I'm not. Part of it is 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 to Diallo's and Sora to Diallo's point. I got my own issues to overcome, and I've had to over. Like I'm not, and it is it is raising daughters that has changed me. It is listening to to being more attentive to what women have said that has changed me. All of that is true, but. But 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 aside from all that, you I don't think that's why I keep challenging this person in the chat. You can't be a decent human being and listen to this and not be at least concerned. Like you can't. It it this is not again. This is not just some. You got to listen to the story. You got to listen to what she went through, and I'm at least willing to hear again. What and and this woman would not want to talk to me for two seconds. So so this is beyond just some. Politically, personally, we're not on the same page. But right. this kind of behavior can't just be, again, and if, if the accusation is false, the response can't be, well, you weren't there, it's none of your business, or you don't know what's inside of a... Like, she's bringing very public, on the record, there's court cases, there's, under there's oath. hearings. I'm sorry, under oath. <laughs> there's, there's copious documentation. In fact, she, if anything... If anything, since the 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 suggestion of 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 uh, uh, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, engaging in the legal process is put on the table. If anything, she accuses him. This is another thing to add to the list of breaking the law by airing audio that he somehow got from one of their hearings. He's playing court audio on his radio show so if 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 the legal world is the is the concern here he's got that in addition to like that would be just another like like so i i don't know it was just my, my i don't even know what, i don't even know what else to say i, I so, just feel we, so, we can't it just took the thing for me last week to a whole different level like i like the whole thing like the political differences, this even this, I get it, the severity of the issues around around gender and sexual identity, all of all of these polit Marxist nationals, all of these are very serious. But when we get to the point where women and children are not even feeling safe in their own community from from not from the state, but from their own people and the people they work with, then we who and I'm not putting myself in this particular group, they wouldn't have me and I'm not there, I'm not saying that, but any of us who are in any form of movement work have to be concerned about this. Have to, have to, we have to, I don't know, I'll stop. Let me stop, let me just stop. So so I, I, I can see that B is like just literally just antagonistic and he, like they say in the South, trying to get your goat or got our goat. So saying dumb shit like it's dangerous to think women's accusations are automatic true. So y'all think, only right. That's why I did my homework, fall. and I dare like, them to do the homework. I nobody, dare be right. go do the homework, and, and nobody, but like nobody's forgetting that. But real quick, real quick, real quick. So I, I've seen dealing dealing with the real has been in the chat for years, I think, and they always seem to have this like argument or defense against maybe whatever we're saying at the time. But that's why I always say like at some point there should be a period where these highly like vocal people should come and just lay it out because it's easier to do this than for us to kind of read and you like type lectures no, well, and shit in the but, chat. But, but on this, this is this is where 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 but just methodologically, as I said in the chat, I'm not interested. I'm not debating someone on this issue. There's right, right. I'm not interested in the discussion. You got to at least go listen to all eight hours of that video, 
if then there is still a, a level, whatever, then let's have that. Well, I'm not interested. Then go have that conversation with people in that community. But this is this is right. not I'm not I'm not especially after having done all of this and gone through <laughs> and sorry for making it selfish, gone through my own trauma listening yeah. to this all week long. I'm not trying right. to hear from this is some random, you got to presume innocence. We just listening to the, <laughs> we just accept all. I'm being very specific to this exact claim. I'm, I'm, and Listen, I'm saying that, when the levels of claims come to th come to this with all that went on, somewhere I, it's got to be addressed. And it pains let, me, allow me to say to something and not and not have any support. Let go me ahead. say something to you, be the anonymous person. I think I know who B is. I, I, but it might be irritated. They, 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 it might be. Said, oh, you gonna get sued? Stop it! Stop it! Now you gonna? I mean, have it that sound like it sound like a dwelling lawyer emailing you. Stop it! I'm saying it sound, but let me say this: I support self exposure. I also don't really give much weight to accusations that don't resonate with what we understand better. Now I'm out here. I've been advocating veganism them for 30 years and if somebody came out and said diallo's fake as hell and he i saw him and Lucy's <laughs> eating pork chops and chitlins now that's an accusation and should anybody be like oh he's a hypocrite he's fake you have to look at the large so when people make accusations like that it was like well has the brother been consistent is there any corroborating behaviors corroborating uh uh evidence to support the accusations so if irritated genie wife comes out and says this man psychologically, emotionally abused me, threatened me, made me feel threatened for the safety of myself and my children and the larger community around this movement did not step up. We can go all the way back to the black, like I said, prior to straight black pride, to the black decency movement. I have listened to lectures with, when he was messing with uh, uh, Kush the Black Unifier, where they stood up and said, black people are the scum of the earth that we are the scum of the earth. The contempt that irritated genie has for the black masses is palpable. He said, black people, we're the scum of the earth. Okay, he didn't say. His lectures, in his lectures, it would state it by Kush the Black Unifier that black people are the scum of the earth, and he agrees. He's on tape that his wife shared saying that black women are rabid dogs, and there is no treatment for a rabid dog. There's only one solution when a dog goes rabid. He has advocated and engaged in physical confrontations. And as greasy as I talk, you see, when I get engaged with my people, I don't encourage or advocate putting hands or, or, or being violent. And even when they brought Dr. Umar here and everybody wanted to pay my way to the DeSabo to go confront Dr. Umar, you know, and so I don't advocate no body putting hands on nobody outside of self-defense. That's the only defensive and ascending violence is the only violence I support and think is justified. Any other type of violence I am wholeheartedly against. Y'all just got me, I got in trouble talking against all these damn guns in the community. So beyond that, you cannot deny that the irritated genie has self-exposed his position, his mentality, and his methodology to be one of reactionary, aggressive, and, and dehumanizing, I would conclude, based on his what he advocates. So this is not just about his wife coming out of left field and talking greasy about him. This, this, these five or, 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 or eight hours of video are one piece of a larger tapestry that this man has deliberately, consciously, and actively constructed around himself. So I didn't just take the wife's accusations at face value. Because like I said, she is a victim, period, full stop. Whether she's a sympathetic victim, yeah, she's not the most sympathetic victim because like I said, her and irritated Jeannie's ideology resonate. They align. They're the same. And throughout talking about all these years, of psychological and emotional abuse. She never said it, it, it motivated me to change my outlook, change my position, change my ideology. 
which I think is unfortunate more so for her because her ideology has harmed her as much, if not more, than the people she spent her entire life in activism attacking and dehumanizing. But I say you got to look at the whole picture. If somebody came out and said, Diallo, Bro Diallo called me out my name and told me my religion was a personal delusion, and then you'd be like, well, that's an accusation. But you, that accusation would carry a lot of weight because I do that all the time everywhere with everybody else. So we, we can't act like common sense don't exist, y'all. Come on now. So the only other thing I wanted to add to your point about the physical violence, I, as I said the other day, I think on the remix, uh, um, when I went back and when I went back and looked at that video of the Baltimore Convention thing, um, what to, almost uh, to kind almost in a way, I, it was the physical. I thought Jeannie was actually appropriate in terms of the physical, the physical confrontational part. Dude put his hands on Jeannie first and Jeannie just moved the hand. Mm -mm. That's not what happened? Well, here's the thing, though. No, hold on. So I, I only want to speak to the physical part about it. I just want to, I, I, I think, again, as I said. If, yes, if, if, that's how it happened. Oh, no. Okay. Well, if 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 my eyes, if, if I saw what I saw correctly, my only point is to point out that I, I think that is to be at least acknowledged, if not given credit, that 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 because I hear what you're saying and I heard very clearly what what his ex-wife was saying in those hours of video. But in this moment, on the, in, the, in the convention, at least when when invited to physical confrontation, I felt like he he reacted appropriately in that space. That part of, of his response was appropriate because um, that could have gone left with any with with any with many of us, I think. And let, allow me Go ahead. to rebut. In Please. defense of the brother, in the mm -hmm. tight slacks and, and 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 extra medium dashiki, I don't know his name, so I'm just describing it. No disrespect. Um, there, in law, there's a legal term of provocation. As much as I abhor Abrahamic religions, I've never entered a mosque, a tabernacle, a synagogue, I know that's and mm. articulated my views uninvited. Mm. Mm. So when you go into a space and you stand up in the space and you literally, I mean, this guy has called for the eradication of people in that room. He has caught, called these people, made horrendous accusations of them preying on our children and I, collaborating with our oppressors. So I'm just saying, I, if, I, if, if, if you see a video online pop up of me in, in one of the NOI mosques or me down at Savior's Day in a goddamn headlock. And I'm talking about they put their hands on me first. Listen, there's a thing called provocation. And, and, and you don't walk up into spaces where you know there's hostility uninvited. Because if somebody invite me, if you invite me to your church. But hold on. No, if we you invite be... me to your. But he we... walked up in there but, for but the express. And but that wasn't a church. It was uh, a public per... event. Hold on, it no, was a I didn't event. say I used the church as my example. That's right, right, right. Example but I'm just saying he had me showing up somewhere where I, get I didn't it. know I don't rock with them. But it's a false equivalence, is what I'm saying. He was okay. he he was I'm not he he was in a public space where he had every right to be. He had every right Absolutely. to voice his opinion. Maybe not in that okay. way. I don't agree with it. I don't think he did all that right. part exactly right. But he had every right to do that. And all I'm saying is, if somebody puts their, it, there, there was no. I've been in formations where you are prepared. If they had security properly prepared, you can usher people, you can protect yes. people, you can slide people without physical whatever, without it escalating. Right. Dude walks right. up from blind spot, hands on. That's not. So I. All I'm saying is, how you know he wasn't the usher though. Uh, so so touching somebody on the shoulder saying because he was asked to get off the mic he was asked to stop away was he not with people matter. like yo because if, if all well, i'm saying is if, if if someone walks up on me behind me and puts their hands on my shoulder you swing it no i'm not because i'm not i'm a peaceful <laughs> human being i'm right. saying it could be misunderstood yeah and it could escalate be. from there that's all i'm yes. saying that's but, all but is it is it a violent or aggressive act it is. Oh wow! I think y'all so. brothers be high strung. I, I mean, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if I call it violent or aggressive, but, but, 
But he did confront him. It's a confrontational act. Physical contact in that way. We're not dapping each other up. We're not accidentally bumping into each other. That thing, I gotta that go watch violent. the tape. That's hostility. That's, I gotta that's, go watch well, the I gotta go well, well, watch well, that tape. Right. No, what right. I'm saying is, I, I, I can't say that he didn't put his hand on his shoulder and say, brother, calm down. Right. And that's not violent. That could be like, like if it if you is to, if, if you, you provoked beef, people. Right. If you about to beef, Jared, if you about to beef, and I'd be like, Jared, chill out, bro. I'm not being physically confronted. I'm just, two chops to the throat. Right. Don't do no, that. No, no. If it's you <laughs> and saying that, that's different. If it's somebody I do not know who's coming from outside of my eye shot and all I'm feeling is a hand on my shoulder. It could be, yeah, first, okay. I got you. Now, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just simply saying it. it it's it, a reaction. It, it is a prov provocation. And I do count that as hostility and I do count that as violence. So I think okay. if you that's what I'm saying. If you're trained and you're trying to do this properly, don't come from outside of eye shot and you don't and you can come with, you, you know, there's different ways you could approach that and yeah. make the same point. And dude didn't do that. And I think in that moment, GD acted appropriately. That's all I'm saying. That's it. OK. Yeah. It, it, Breakfast. This is a really good point. Be hot. B Hop from Philly, when B Hop touched Tank right before they did that weigh in, Tank was Tank and Calvin about to go off on him. So I'm completely lost. Is, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't you, know you either. Know the I just, when Bryant, when, when Bernard Hopkins, yeah, Bernard oh. Hopkins came, right? Tank, Tank and Ryan was like face off. Bernard was like, chill out, Tank. And Tank about to give him that one. And, and, uh, okay, uh, man. Calvin, guess, the trainer, man. like, yo, don't touch him, yo, don't touch him. They talk don't this. swing and be hot now. Family. Be careful now. I don't uh, know. Calvin still can Hopkins swing memory. too. Calvin still can I guess I'm gonna go back and watch that because Hopkins, like I said, Hopkins fought um, professionally in his 40s. That's a bad boy. Yo, let me yeah, let me say this. Hopkins, you talk Hopkins career was based off of hitting kidney shots. So kidney shots is, is deadly, but that's what he 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 had a lot of kidney shots in his career. So he anyway. took less punches than most people. But anyway. To say don't like that. that he was in a space where he, he knew like he, he, he was in a space that he had every right to be. Go back and look at, there was a Black Lives Matter event. Am I right, right or wrong? It was, it was uh, an no. Institute of the Black no. World event at a convention. What yeah, was on? I gotta go back and watch the tape. It was not a Black Lives Matter event. Nah. And it was, okay. nah, and it was it, you know, and again, I, I, that's all I'm saying. Okay. I think you're right. Let's go have breakfast. Peace, everybody. I'm right too, Jack, yeah, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Peace, everybody. As long as you're willing to fight for the peace. Like is it Hampton. wrong? Is it illegal to punch somebody in the kidneys in boxing? No. So why are you why are you acting like I thought liver and kidneys? I mean, I ain't saying it's illegal, but like that's 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 an that's an advantage. Like if you can hit somebody in the kidney, they're gonna fall down for a minute. But I'm but just but okay, and like you're acting as though that detracts from your record. I'm not saying that's a. Isn't that you're, not the point? you're not a sports guy. You're not a sports guy. No, I'm so not. not that's why I'm, I'm trying to get is, educated. The point is, he has less. He has. Le he's going to take less hits. If you hit somebody in the kidney, some of them fights. I thought we was going to get then breakfast. Then, then why hungry. not going to get breakfast? But why are you saying that as though? Oh, he was a kidney puncher. Is it that detracts from his record or his ability? I mean, maybe I don't know if you defended. Are him, there maybe, some champions who refuse to punch kidneys? Oh, comrade, say you do lose a point for kidney shot, so never mind. Okay, I, my bad. I don't know. Comrade. I don't. Okay, know. Right. I don't. I really don't know. I'm, what I'm getting misinformation. Y'all okay. know I take the stuff y'all tell me to the streets. I take the stuff y'all tell me. I was about to go to the barber shop and, and talk about kidney punches. You know, because I can't relate. We gonna have to get a we gonna have, we gonna everything have to get I know about everything I know about ball chasing. Room. And and manly things I get from y'all, you know, cause right. <laughs> so y'all can't steer me wrong because I I was about to carry that forward. I'm about like, to, yeah, I'm, be hot. Clicking the button. I, Peace, everybody. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Breakfast time. We gotta get, we gotta get brunch.